Number 10. The Devil's Tramping Ground This scary site is located about 10 miles from Siler City in Chatham County, North Carolina. The Devil's Tramping Ground is a strange footpath that forms a circle 40 feet in diameter. Locals claim that this is where Satan himself walks to contemplate his evil deeds. The path is completely free of vegetation and the only thing that will grow inside the ring is tough clumps of grass. Apparently even sticks left in the pathway are cleared away by the following morning. There are a few other stories of where the circle may have come from. Some folks claim that the area was a meeting for Cherokee people who made the circle bear with dances. Others link the site to the lost colony of Renoke, and scientists have tried to explain it as being a former molasses mill. Whatever you think may be the case, visitors have claimed to see red glowing eyes in the circle. If that doesn't sound evil, I don't know what else could. If it is the devil's place to think, he sure does do a lot of thinking. I wonder why this spot in particular. There is a scenic byway named Devil's Tramping Ground Road, and it's free to travel, but the actual site is currently located on private property. Number 9. Paint Rock You can find this location near the Tennessee border and the small town of Hot Springs. Paint Rock is considered one of the most haunted places in North Carolina. It has been a landmark for eons, and it features one of the best examples of Native American pictographs in the state. There is a figure of a lone Cherokee man that has been seen walking through the forest near Paint Rock, but that's not the scary part. What makes this one of the most haunted places is more about the famous body of water it overlooks. Legend has it that singing maidens there have lured many men to their demise. These maidens sound like something straight out of Harry Potter, and I'd love to know what it is that lured the men in. Do we think they sang, gave them an offer they couldn't refuse, or did they just put these unlucky men into a trance? So many things I'd love to know about the maidens without going anywhere near the water. You can still visit Paint Rock today and check out the Native American history, but I think I'll stick to Google Images personally. Number 8. Demon Dog Located in the small Blue Ridge Mountain town of Valle Criscus, which is Latin for Valley of the Cross because the town has two streams that meet at right angles in the middle of the valley. Close by there's an old stone church that sits near Highway 184. According to the legend, if you drive past the church's graveyard at night, of course it's at night, a black dog will jump out from behind a gravestone and start chasing your car. I don't know about you all, but for me being chased is immediately a hundred times scarier. Apparently no matter how fast you drive, the dog will keep pace. There are many stories of people being chased by the dog. In some it has red eyes, in other it has yellow. But the thing that remains the same in every story is that the only way to get the dog to stop chasing you is if you cross the bridge nearby where the two streams cross. This is not an official tourist attraction like some others on the list, but the cemetery is free to visit in case you wanted to test out the story yourself. At number 7, the Duke Mansion. This terrifying site is located in Charlotte's Myers Park neighborhood. The Duke Mansion was built in 1915 as the home for James Duke of Duke University and Duke Energy. However, the property was briefly owned by John Avery in the 1920s, which is when the paranormal happening reportedly began. The story starts after Avery's wife was hospitalized for severe mental health issues. The lonely John began renting a room to a young writer, Maggie, who he, shocker, ended up falling in love with. However, Avery refused to leave his wife, resulting in Maggie to break off their affair. Before Maggie left, Avery was able to get her to promise to meet him at the home one year later, dead or alive. So a year later, Maggie showed up and waited until it was almost midnight when a flash of lightning illuminated a figure of a man watching her from the window, so Maggie rushed in the door. The house appeared to be empty, but she made her way to the library. Just as the clock struck 12, she heard footsteps on the staircase and Avery appeared just in time. As the two reached out for one another, his hand went right through hers. Avery then said, dead or alive. It turned out that Avery had actually passed a few days earlier and a letter revealed him worried if he would be able to make it to the meeting. Very cute, but still super haunted. Number 6. The Great Dismal Swamp Just with the name alone, you know this place isn't going to have a nice backstory. The Great Dismal Swamp encompasses more than 100,000 acres straddling the boundary of North Carolina and Virginia. It was home to Native Americans over 13,000 years ago, and George Washington tried to convert the wetlands into farmlands. Though pretty, the swamp is dangerous and spooky. Along with the wild animals, including snakes, the swamp is deep and hard to get out of. Many have drowned in the water, and mysterious lights have been seen in the forest gliding over the water. Hunters have even lost bears and deers, claiming they disappeared without a trace. The most famous tale from the swamp, however, is that of two Native American lovers. The woman passed before they could wed and was buried in the swamp. The man later drowned because he swore he could see his love in a white canoe. Now the pair can reportedly be seen from time to 
the time paddling on Lake Drummond together. It sounds like this swamp holds far more than just a poor couple, and I think I'm okay without knowing. At number five, Cedar Grove Cemetery. The Cedar Grove Cemetery, located in New Bern, was established in 1800 in response to the yellow fever epidemic, already starting off strong in the creepy department. Apparently, during the epidemic, so many people passed that at night trenches were dug in the churchyard in a line near the adjoining property, and the bodies were buried there indiscriminately. That sounds like the perfect recipe for a lot of forgotten and angry spirits looking for revenge. Then, after 1802, the cemetery became the major New Bern burial ground. Now, the cemetery holds North Carolina's most influential citizens from the 19th and 20th century. The thing Cedar Grove may be best known for is the looming black entrance arch. Legend has it that if the arch weeps or bleeds its sticky rust colored ooze, I have to add that is how it was described in the article I read, and I mean, what a description. If you get oozed on by the arch, apparently you will soon be the one needing a spot to be buried. I don't know what the sticky rust colored ooze could be coming from a stone arch other than some powerful supernatural stuff, so I think I'll definitely never be going there ever at all. At number four, the Grove Park Inn. Considered the frightful jewel of the haunted Asheville, North Carolina, the Grove Park Inn has one guest that requires no checkout. The most famous apparition is called the Pink Lady. Although the ghost remains unidentified, it's believed that she was a young woman who fell five stories from room 545 to the Palm Court Atrium back in 1920. According to the many stories of guests encountering the Pink Lady, it seems to me she's not a shy girl. One contractor who was repairing the room felt a presence. This gave him the chills, but his last straw was when he felt a tugging on his ear. Apparently, he ran out of the room scared and never returned. Now that construction worker knows what's up. Any character in a horror movie needs to be more like him. Since then, many guests have reported encounters with the Pink Lady, most of which involved being touched by her. Oh, so the Grove Park Inn can quite literally make my nightmares come true. The general consensus seems to be that she is gentle, but I don't know, gentle or not, she's still a ghost touching me. Number three, the Biltmore Estate. After a young George Washington Vanderbilt visited Asheville, North Carolina, his mother fell in love with the surrounding mountains. The historic estate was then built in the late 1800s on approximately 125,000 acres of land purchased by Vanderbilt. He established an impressive art and artifact collection and a library full of rare editions. In 1914, he passed and his grandsons immediately inherited the estate, which they then turned into a tourist attraction. During his life, Vanderbilt loved to spend time in his Biltmore library when storms rolled in and apparently he continues to enjoy it in his afterlife. Visitors of the estate have reported seeing a shadowy figure in the room when the weather turns gloomy. Even as a ghost, he still had style. Only coming out in the gloomy weather adds to the spookiness of it all. He's not the only one who still enjoys the house. The ghost of his wife, Edith, is also known to visit her husband there, with many guests reporting hearing her whisper, George. Staff members have also said that the Biltmore Library is one of the most haunted places in all of North Carolina. They've heard eerie sounds of a party with clinking glasses, laughter, and echoing music. I personally try to avoid ghost parties, but it's good to know where not to go. Number two, Teach's Hole. This haunted spot is located in the outer banks of North Carolina on Ocracoke Island, which is riddled with spooky stories. The most famous one, however, is Teach's Hole. Ocracoke Island was the home and the final resting place, kind of, of the pirate Blackbeard, whose real name was Edward Teach. He was known as a great intimidator, leading people to raise their white flags just at the sight of him. Teach did eventually hang up his pirate hat and pledge allegiance to the Queen, but in 1718, he was beheaded by Lieutenant Robert Maynard of the British Royal Navy. Maynard was sent by the governor of Virginia, who was not convinced the famous pirate was really willing to give up the criminal lifestyle. Now, it is said that Blackbeard haunts the land near where his body was tossed into the sea, also known as the Point. People have reported seeing Blackbeard pacing the shoreline looking for his missing head. And at number one, Lydia's Bridge. Every article I read about Lydia's Bridge started out with, if you grew up in Jamestown, you know the story of Lydia. After reading the story, yeah, how could you not know about it? It's horrifying. So the story goes that a pretty hitchhiker in a white dress flags drivers down near the old Jamestown Bridge and then asks for a ride. Now the first time I read this, I thought it was the lore of how the woman passed, but no, the hitchhiker that asked 
asks for a ride is the ghost. Apparently, she quietly gets into their cars, tells them to take her home, and then vanishes. Are you kidding me? If I picked up a hitchhiker that turned out to be a ghost, I'd be out. Absolutely not. The spirit known as Lydia has been spotted on rainy, foggy nights as she walks alone or stands beside the road, searching for help. The ghost is believed to be that of a young woman who passed away in a tragic car accident at the bridge many decades ago. The most commonly told story of Lydia's passing is that the fatal car accident occurred when a boy and a girl drove to a dance, maybe even the prom, on a rainy night. But sorry Lydia, I don't have room for another passenger. Number 10. Captain Cook Hotel. The Captain Cook Hotel, of course located in Anchorage, Alaska, is said to be haunted by the ghost of one John Jack Sturgis, who is a former chef at the hotel who died in a fire back in 1986. What a start to a list already. We're just in the ghost depths already. Guests and staff alike have reported various paranormal experiences, such as unexplained voices, cold spots, and the sound of footsteps in empty hallways, which I don't know, all signs point to ghosts when you put those in a row. Some guests have even reported seeing the apparition of a man in a chef's uniform. I don't, I'm, just, I'm not trying to laugh. That's just, imagine that, you know what I mean? 4 a.m. in the middle of the night. You're like, chef, may I? Could you turn off the light? Thanks. Like a ghost wearing a chef's hat. It's like, that's, that, that's only funny. That is an only funny thing. That is from Luigi's Mansion. He's just smacking the spatula all night looking at you. He's like, how do you like Greg's? I'm like, ah, that's so scary. Despite these reports, the hotel remains a popular destination destination for visitors to Anchorage who are drawn to its unique haunted history. Apparently people want to see a ghost wearing a chef's hat. Honestly, now that I'm talking about it, I kind of want to see that too, but you know. Knock on wood. Number nine, the Golden North Hotel. The Golden North Hotel, sounds like a Game of Thrones classic. There have been reports of paranormal activity on the third floor of the Golden North Hotel in Skagway, Alaska. I like when it's specific, when it has a certain floor or certain room, it's how you know it's legit. Guests and staff have reported hearing strange noises, seeing apparitions, and feeling unexplained cold spots on the floor. I guess they're walking around with bare feet. Bare feet in a hotel? That's brave. Some have even claimed to have encountered the ghost of a former employee named Mary who is said to haunt the hotel. All these ghosts that are haunting their past work establishments. If I die, I'm gonna haunt this place for sure. While the hotel embraces its haunted history and offers guided ghost tours for visitors, which is an odd flex, it's worth noting that paranormal experiences are subjective and not everybody may have the same encounter, okay? So, what's fun to some is haunting to others, so tread carefully in the ghost world. Don't make fun of people online, you know? Some are really afraid of ghosts with chef hats, so. Number eight, Gekona Lodge and Trading Post. There are reports and stories about Gekona Lodge and Trading Posts being haunted. There's a lot online. This is probably a very real one. Some visitors and staff have claimed to have experienced unusual occurrences and paranormal activity at this lodge, which was supposed to be a winter getaway, but now it's just a Stanley Kubrick classic. According to the stories, the ghost of a woman dressed in 1800 style clothing has been seen walking, or floating rather, through the lodge. And strange noises and footsteps have been heard in empty rooms. It's always an old fashioned ghost too. It's never a ghost wearing a polo. You ever notice that? It's always like an old Victorian woman. Like why? Why can't we have a newer ghost? Slim Pickens on the attire in heaven, I guess. Must be. They're like, hey, we have an old saggy robe, and that's about it. Here you go. Go haunt a hotel. There have also been reports of objects moving on their own, doors opening and closing by themselves, and again, cold spots in certain areas on the floor, which, I don't know, it could be lousy heating, really, if you ask me. It's Alaska, right? Number seven, Westmark Fairbanks Hotel. There have been numerous reports of paranormal activity in room 277 of the Westmark Fairbanks Hotel in Alaska. Again, I like when it's a specific room. That, for me, seals the deal. It's like 1408. I'm in. I'm locked in. Now I'm a believer. It's so eerie. The room is said to have been haunted by the ghost of a woman who allegedly took her own life there many years ago, which is sad and terrifying. Guests who have also stayed in that room have reported feeling uneasy or, my personal nightmare, they feel as if they're being watched all night. Yeah, just eyes in a painting watching you, I guess. Sometimes they even hear strange noises or voices and seeing unexplained movements of objects. Those classic three ghost things. Some guests have also claimed to have seen the ghostly figure of a woman in the room or in the hallway. So that's good. This one really hits all the marks. Five stars for paranormal activity, really. Number six, the Hilton Anchorage Hotel. Guests and staff members have both reported seeing apparitions, hearing strange noises, and experiencing other unusual phenomenon in various parts of the hotel. Phenomena? Phenomenon? I always add the N there. I'm not sure which one it is. One of the most commonly reported haunted areas of this hotel is said to be the third floor, particularly rooms 309 and 317. Two for one package. It's the north and south sides are haunted, but everything in the middle, 
Yeah, you're good, just don't explore. Guests who have stayed in these rooms have both reported seeing ghostly apparitions and experiencing other strange occurrences, like lights turning on and off by themselves and the feeling of being touched by an unseen presence. What a terrible, annoying ghost. I think I would rather see a ghost than have them f with the lights all night long. You know what I mean? How annoying is that? You have to get out of your bed and keep shutting it off? That's the worst. That's worse than just being haunted, really. It is a Hilton, so it's probably at least a decent sleep, you know? They're good over there. They got a good, nice breakfast set up in the morning. It's all about the departure the next day. That's all it is for hotels. You could have ghosts all night, lights flickering, but you have a juice bar the next morning? I'll forget about the whole ordeal. We're good, five stars, I'm coming back. Number five, the Van Gilder Hotel. Located in Seaward, Alaska, the Van Gilder Hotel, I mean, first of all, this thing is tiny. It looks like a joke. It looks like a cartoon police station. How is this place haunted? It looks like a place Wreck-It Ralph would have a field day with. Small but mighty, I guess. The hotel, which was built in 1916, has a long, long history of ghosts and ghouls. Numerous reports of paranormal activity over the years. One of the most commonly reported haunted areas is the room 202, where guests have reported unexplained movements of objects, and again, the feeling of being watched, which is so scary, I don't like that, it's the worst. There have also been reports of ghostly operations in other parts of the hotel, including the lobby and the stairwell. The lobby, these ghosts are getting brave. I mean, not even letting us check in and you're already moving shit around trying to scare us, that's very brave, okay. You're excited, we get it. The most famous ghost associated with the Van Gilder Hotel is that of a woman named Fanny Guthrie Bame, who apparently died in the hotel back in the 1950s. Guests have reported seeing Fanny's ghostly figure on the second floor, that's where she allegedly fell to her death from the balcony, which is so sad. If I didn't see that again though, as a ghost, I'd be like, oh, this is a terrible TikTok loop scenario. Number four, Inlet Tower Hotel and Suites. Okay, this one is very, very large, and it looks very haunted, okay? It doesn't look like a mini police station. This one's very Kubrick. This hotel, which was built in 1952, it already has a long history. It's seen a few deaths in its rooms, and of course, to follow, there have been numerous reports of ghostly apparitions over the years. Apparitions, apparitions, I'm mixing it up now. I'm just saying random words. One of the most common reported haunted areas of the hotel is the 15th floor. Way high up in there. This is haunted. Where guests have heard strange moaning noises. It's kind of funny. That's it's ter terrifying. Don't get me wrong, but like, uh, that's kind of like, okay. Who's doing that? Which, which room is that coming from, you know? Feeling cold spots and seeing ghostly figures walk around the hallways at night. It's your classic haunted hotel. The most famous ghost associated with the Inlet Tower Hotel is that of a woman who allegedly jumped to her death from the 15th floor. That is really high up, that's so sad. Guests have reported seeing her ghostly figure on the 15th floor as well as in the hotel's elevator. Which is better, that's definitely a step. As long as she's in the elevator this time around, we're good. Keep her in there, not outside on the scary balcony. Inside where it's safe. Number three, the Fairbanks Memorial Hospital. A haunted hospital, nice. I couldn't imagine a more vulnerable place to see a ghostly figure. Excuse me, can I get some more jello? Lights are flickering, some chicks floating. They're like, uh, I'm gonna check out. The Fairbanks Memorial Hospital in Alaska. I mean, the hospital, first of all, it was built in 1972 and it has a long history of, well, hospital stuff. A lot of deaths, also a lot of new life. So silver lining, I guess, that's a good thing. One of the most commonly reported areas is the intensive care unit, the ICU. That's what the ghosts say. They say, hey, I see you right there. I'm gonna watch you all night. Both staff members and patients have reported hearing voices feeling someone touch them who wasn't actually there, and seeing ghosts of past patients walk around the halls at night. That's, that's the scariest thing I've ever heard of. Past patients, just like. Visitors and staff members have reported seeing a ghostly figure, like a very specific ghostly figure in the ICU, as well as other parts of the hospital. So, could be a past nurse, could be someone who used to work there, maybe someone who was killed while they were building it. I don't know, it's a, it, it's a good ghost. It's a hospital, good ghost. That's one you maybe don't mind bumping into at night. Number two. Ice worms. Yeah, need I say more ice worms, I guess. That's a terrifying thing to look at now that you're in Alaska. I'm dodging these suckers all spring. Now I gotta worry about winter too? God, I hate worms. I'm Canadian. We don't need any ice worms, okay? We're all set. The only time a worm ever lives life in a glacial ice form is in Alaska. How impressive is that? One and only place you'll find ice worms. All your life you see worms shrivel up and then fade away on the sidewalk, but I've never ever seen one near ice. They're supposed to run out of fuel and then die off, but ice worms, these things just keep going. They get stronger. Should that icy temperature rise, however, above freezing, well that's when these worms die off. It's the way we see worms go normally. They shrivel up and, you know, go Ugh. They get stronger the longer that they wait and plan. Honestly, these worms are kind of cool. If you're ever in Alaska and you see ice worms, Comment down below. These are like Captain America worms. I'm weirdly into bugs and these things sound like they're from space, so 
had to include them. Ice worms. Number one, the Eldred Rock Lighthouse. We'll finish up with a haunted lighthouse. Not the most exciting, but I'm doing my best here. It's that or ice worms. Both are pretty thrilling, okay? What's creepier than an island full of shipwrecks? You tell me. The lighthouse, which was built in 1906, is located on a remote island in the Lynn Canal. And it was in operation until 1973. One of the most notorious shipwrecks was the Clara Nevada Steamship. Now in 1898, she smashed into Eldred Rock, burst into flames instantly before sinking into the icy depths, probably surrounded by ice worms. The disaster took 75 lives and it's also believed that hundreds of pounds of gold were on board when this ship sank. So it was a curse. It was for sure cursed. All that gold, that many people died. I smell a curse. I know it. One of the most commonly reported ghost occurrences at the Eldrin Rock Lighthouse is the sighting of a ghostly woman, again, you guessed it, wearing all white. The classic Victorian gown. Legend has it the woman was a former lighthouse keeper's wife who died on the island and has remained there in spirit. Remained there. I guess she's stuck there for all of eternity, but we'll say she remained there. And if that's not enough for you, the lighthouse has been the subject of paranormal investigations. And some investigators have captured electronic voice phenomena. Yeah, they got EVPs on this island, so it's the real deal. That's how you know. Remind me to avoid this lighthouse at all costs. Great, cheers. Starting us off at number 10, Lafitte Guest House. Once the mansion of a very rich man named Paul Gleese and his family, by the 20th century, the building became a hotel and has been visited by countless guests throughout the years. But despite the many families that have lived in the mansion prior, it is not them who haunts the building, but a girl named Marie who died of yellow fever while staying in room 21 with her mother. Legend has it that her her mother was so distraught by Marie's death that she would often revisit the hotel and stay in the very room where Marie lost her life. And years later, she too died in room 21. The two ghosts haunt the grounds, terrifying visitors who stay in their room, perhaps hoping to convince them never to return. Those that have stayed report seeing Marie in the mirror in the middle of the night, and that during the day, she can be seen walking around the grounds, striking up a conversation with you before vanishing into thin air. And if that doesn't freak you out, the mother's gut-wrenching sobs can also be heard at night, and she too has been known to frighten the guests by turning the lights on and off or throwing objects around to get your attention. All those that enter the room claim to immediately feel a sense of despair and sorrow come over them, and none that visit wish to return. Coming in at number 9, The Logan Mansion. Built in 1897 for a beer distributor named Lafayette. Yet are Logan, this mansion is believed to be haunted by the ghost of a girl named Theodora Hunt, allegedly the neighbor of Mr. Logan, who one day leapt out of a third floor window in the attic and plummeted to her death. For years, it has been regarded as one of the most haunted places in the state, with many recent visitors claiming to see items moving on their own, doors mysteriously locking and unlocking themselves, and the giggles of Theodora Hunt coming from the attic. Well, Theodora tends to be more mischievous than anything. There have been other visitors claiming to hear haunting voices and apparitions in the window where Theodora allegedly fell to her death, and some fear that she has company, and that is what most are truly afraid of. Next up at number 8, the Shreveport Municipal Auditorium. Built between 1926 to 1929, it originally served to commemorate the soldiers who served and lost their lives to World War I. Nowadays, it's a historical performance and meeting venue and widely known to be riddled with ghosts and paranormal activity. Audience members, tour guides, and staff alike have all experienced something strange while spending time in the building, like doors opening and shutting all on their own, disembodied voices echoing throughout the halls, as well as strange, inexplicable sounds lurking in the shadows. Although not all the spirits are terrifying, one reportedly is often and heard clapping and saying, I love Johnny Cash. There are far more creepy ghosts than friendly ones. Reportedly, a girl is often seen running around the auditorium and no one knows just who she is or why she's there. And according to legends, during the Louisiana Hayride, a woman died in labor in the basement bathroom. And some claim to have heard her moans as if she is still trying to deliver. Coming in at number seven, the Miller Cemetery. Located
located in Eunice, Louisiana, the Miller Cemetery has more than just buried bodies to creep out visitors. One ghost in particular is known to haunt the grounds, and it's because of him that locals nicknamed it the Headless Cemetery. The Headless Ghost is known to frequent the area, roaming around the graves at night and terrifying guests. But what's strange about this ghost is he's not headless for any horrific death, but allegedly because nobody remembers his face due to the unrecognizable picture on his tombstone. Or at least that's the legend we've been told. If a headless ghost isn't enough to keep you away, many have also reported their cars suddenly not working or breaking down as soon as they are on the gravel road by the cemetery. So if you do dare enter, you might just be stranded and who knows what the headless ghost will do to you then. Next up at number 6, Forbing Tracks. Strangely, or maybe not so strangely, I don't really know the statistics on this one, Miller Cemetery is not the only place in Louisiana where a headless ghost is known to roam. The Forbing Railroad tracks as well have terrifying ghosts that many claim to haunt the grounds at night. Legend has it, one night an old man was reportedly beheaded and his ghost now wanders the tracks holding a lantern and scaring all that see him. But that isn't all. Apparently a bunch of students also died here many, many years ago after allegedly being hit by an oncoming train. Legend has it that if you park your car on the tracks and put flour on the back of it, it will mysteriously begin to move on its own, showing the handprints of the students in the flower on the back. But if I were you, I would not try it out for yourself, otherwise you too might be a ghost haunting the tracks of Forbing, Louisiana. Next up at number 5, Magnolia Plantation. I am sure it comes as no surprise that a plantation would be the breeding grounds for tortured spirits, considering how much horrifying and cruel activity occurred on their property during the early to mid 19th century. And Magnolia's plantation is among some of the most haunted. There are stories that a large portion of the activity at this plantation has to do with the countless voodoo curses that were placed on the original owners, but others say that the real horrors of the property are due to the dying room. The name was given to the haunted room as there have been countless tales of slaves and other residents taking their lives in it when they could no longer endure the agony of their existence. Visitors have reported hearing their screams from the dying room to this day as well as seeing the many spirits lurk around the property. As well, a union major is believed to have been poisoned in the same room and sometimes at night you can see his distorted face in the window of the very room he died in. Others claim to have heard chanting, slamming doors, flickering lights, and investigators have even captured audio recordings from several spirits and maybe most crazy is that motion sensors have been known to go off and on when no one was around. Listen, everyone that visits agrees they are not wanted there. Coming in at number 4, to Frere's house. Although now it's a cozy bed and breakfast, to Frere's has a dark history from its time as a plantation, and as such it comes with a bevy of ghost sightings that will chill you to the bone. The most well known legend of the property is that a woman named Amelie Camo once jumped into a well after losing her family to yellow fever. Her body was later buried on the property and some believe she still haunts the grounds weeping for the the family she lost. Others have reported a little girl living in the attic that may come and speak to you, usually asking you to viens voir, which means come see in French. And I'm afraid to know just what she might want you to come up and see. Originally there was a piano in the house that guests could play, but it had to be removed after countless complaints of it being played in the middle of the night and waking up guests. But of course, when the owner would go to check, no one would ever be playing it. So if you're feeling brave, you can go ahead and stay, but as for me, I think I will look for somewhere where a creepy girl ghost doesn't try to swoon me into following her up into an attic. Coming in at number 3, Central Louisiana State Hospital. Believed to be haunted by the near 3,000 patients that are buried on the grounds, this psychiatric facility from 1904 is actually still operating today, believe it or not. Reportedly haunted by all those that died on its grounds, many hospital staff claim to experience extremely strange and creepy activity nearly every single day. Many say they constantly hear slamming doors from one secured only moments prior, witnessing chairs being flipped over when no one was in the room, and even
open glasses shattering after being hucked across the room. On one occasion, a piece of flooring was discovered broken into pieces, almost as if exploded. Nothing had been broken moments earlier, and none of the staff could figure out how it broke. Or rather, what had broken it. As it's still a fully functioning hospital, it's not open to visitors, but some will walk past the building and swear they can hear strange voices or bright shining lights coming from inside the building. Coming in at number two, Dauphine Orleans Hotel. The historic Dauphine Orleans Hotel opened somewhere around the 1770s and has remained one of the most well known buildings in the French Quarter, but not for its hospitality, instead, for its terrifying ghost sightings. Back in its heyday, there was a brothel in the French Quarter owned by a woman named May Bailey. And what was especially unique about Bailey's business was that she actually had a permit for it, making it completely legal. But despite its legality and popularity among many, May Bailey's sister, Millie, resented her for forcing her into the line of work. Hoping for a way out, Millie ended up meeting a Confederate soldier and the two got engaged. But sadly, on the morning of the wedding, her betrothed was shot dead. And so Millie remained trapped to her life of courtship. Today, visitors and staff have reported seeing her roam the halls in her wedding dress, sobbing and crying out for her lost love. But that is not the worst that's been witnessed. Employees say they routinely see glasses fall off shelves, doors unlatched after just being locked, and there is even one account of a bar stool levitating off the ground. But most terrifying of all are the legends of guests checking in and never leaving the hotel. So if I were you, I would pick somewhere else to stay for the night. And last up in our number one spot. Hotel Provincial. Branded as one of the most haunted places in New Orleans, the Hotel Provincial is located in the infamously haunted French Quarter. And just like every building around it, of course, it's horrifyingly haunted. Now, back in the day, there was a military hospital just down the street from the hotel. And one of the buildings used a medicinal herb garden for the hospital. Which seems a little strange, but does make sense once you find out the kind of spirits that haunt the hall. Today the hotel consists of five buildings and although ghosts are known to lurk in each, the most haunted building is believed to be number five. Guests of building number five have reported seeing insane things such as confederate soldiers covered in blood, moaning from agonizing pain, who miraculously disappear once the lights turn on. Others have reported apparitions of surgeons in the halls, and maybe most disturbing is the amount of guests that have seen strange pools of blood appear on their bedding or the floor that disappear just as fast as they came into view. One guest even reported that as the elevator door opened on the hotel's second floor, the hospital was entirely in view. So it seems as though the soldiers that died in the hospital down the street took a liking to the hotel and continue to haunt all the visitors who enter to this day. Starting off this countdown, we have the Alaska. Alaska Triangle. Turns out that Alaska has its very own Bermuda Triangle. This is referred to as the area in the southeast to the northern Boro region to the western metropolis of Anchorage. Apparently, more than 20,000 people have gone missing in this area. That's just in the past half century alone. And these people go missing without a trace. No one knows what happens to them or where they went. So, some believe that this area is home to mythological type beasts that kidnap and then eat these people. Whereas others believe that this area is home to some dark vortex that sucks these poor souls in. Regardless of what you believe in, one thing is for sure, this triangle has and continues to take the lives of many. In our ninth spot, we have the UFO base. And if you guys are still watching, hopefully smash that like button, let me know in the comments below that you're still here. Hi. It is believed that Alaska is home to a top secret UFO base. Even though it's not that top secret if people claim that there is one. 
Anyways, Mount Hayes is the highest mountain in the eastern Alaskan range. That's the place where people believe extraterrestrials and UFOs are located. It all started in the 1940s when a number of UFOs were spotted in that area. Eventually, the sightings got more and more frequent that the FBI was called in to investigate the area. And the sightings haven't stopped. There have been hundreds of sightings throughout the years. In fact, Pat Price, a former CIA remote viewer, even said that the mountain, and I quote, housed one of the aliens largest bases. So this urban legend might not be so much of a legend. Moving on at number 7, we have Kilut. A Kilut is said to be an evil earth spirit that appears in the form of a black dog that's completely hairless, but it does have hair on its little feet. But only its feet. Apparently this dog then stalks travelers at night and has been known to attack and kill them. Those that have apparently seen this spirit say they saw dog tracks in the snow that then disappeared right in front of their own eyes. That's apparently a sign that the Kilut is nearby. In Inuit legend, the Kilu is said to be a spirit of death. Others believe that it's a real life cryptid. Scariest part? Apparently, just by looking at this creature, they can cause victims to become disoriented and spiral into madness. They then will become lost and perish from hypothermia. The Kilu waits until this moment and then attacks and eats its victim. In our sixth spot, we have Mother Load Lodge. Located in Palmer, this lodge is said to be very haunted. In fact, it literally has been known to spook even the hardest of souls. According to local legend, this hotel is haunted by a number of different spirits. Most famously, there's this black apparition ghost. Given that name because it always appears as a black cloudy apparition. People have seen this spirit wandering the grounds. Another ghost is a figure that's dressed in black. This figure likes to show itself in mirror reflections. Just sounds like Bloody Mary to me. No thank you. On top of that, people have reported hearing strange noises in the middle of the night and have seen curtains open and close by itself. It's a good place to go ghost hunting, but a bad place to spend the night. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the aliens. In late fall through winter to early spring, the northern lights can be seen on nights with clear skies. I've always wanted to see the northern lights, like they're quite beautiful. But according to a weird urban legend, it states that the northern lights are produced by aliens. Yeah, you heard me. Legend goes that aliens create these beautiful lights so that they can then fly through the air undetected. In fact, cosmonaut Ivan Wagner was filming the northern lights when he captured a UFO flying by. Plus, there's already a ton of UFO and alien sightings in Alaska. So, could it be that this legend is true? That the aliens are behind this colorful display of lights? Moving on to number four, we have the sea monster. Located in the waters near Kodiak Island lurks a close relative to the Loch Ness Monster. It has since been given the name the Kodiak Sea Monster. It all started in 1971 when a group of fishermen set sail. That's when they encountered this massive sea beast. One of the fishermen said, and I quote, We don't know what it was, but it had a grayish color and we couldn't see any fins or any tail, and it never made any noise. It would just come up and you could see the head and part of the body. Another man described it as being 30 feet long and had a head on it that looked kind of like a horse. Then in 2002, it was seen again, this time by a different group of fishermen. They described it as having a massive head and neck. They couldn't tell if the head was a foot in diameter or three feet in diameter. To this day, the beast has never been caught, so maybe it's still out there, continuing to scare local fishermen. In our third spot, we have the Alaskan Vortex. So let's talk more about this Alaskan Triangle. The missing persons rate in that area is more than twice the national average. It's insane. As I mentioned briefly, some people believe that a vortex is to blame for all the disappearances. Legend goes that the vortex basically sucks people in and then transports them to different dimensions. Let's look at some of the facts used to support this theory. For starters, apparently the area has a huge number of magnetic anomalies. It throws off compasses and has even made people feel sick. A number of rescue workers that have gone gone into the area have claimed to feel disoriented, lightheaded, and have experienced auditory hallucinations. This could be evidence that a vortex is present. Moving on to number two, we have the Bigfoot. 
Alaska apparently has its own Bigfoot. They call it the hairy beast, and apparently it lives in Port Chatham. It all started back in the 1930s when a number of people went missing in this area. In 1931, a man named Andrew Kamluck went out logging. He was later found dead in the forest with a bad blow to his head. Around the same time, another man was out in the area and randomly disappeared without a trace. And then another man named Tom Larson was out chopping wood when he saw this hairy beast on the beach. The creature was just standing there staring at him. It didn't attack him though. There are more stories that involve people mysteriously disappearing or dying in the area, and they blame it on this mysterious hairy beast. In fact, on a number of other occasions, people have seen like weird man-like beast footprints in the mud, which they believe is from this terrifying creature. And in our number one spot, we have the Kush Taka. Otters are cute little cuddly animals that are pretty innocent, right? Well, not in Alaska. You gotta be careful with the otters out there. Because they might actually be shape shifting creatures known as Kushtaka. The Kushtaka is said to be a cross between an otter and a man. In some stories, these creatures are said to be helpful, but in most stories, they are deceptive and evil creatures. They tend to mimic the screams of women and children so that fishermen will be like, oh my god, someone's out there. I need to help them. I'll save them. And then they go to help and they just get killed. They are also said to appear when people are vulnerable. Maybe there's a lost fisherman or hiker or someone that's injured. They'll come and be like, we're here to help you, to rescue you. Instead, they'll lead you deeper into the wilderness and either tear you to pieces or turn you into a kushtaka to prevent your soul from ever being able to reincarnate. Wow, that's terrifying. Plus, the fact that they can also shapeshift into an otter is really weird. Like, so maybe you're out on the water and you're like, oh, cute, look at that little otter. And then all of a sudden, it's like, psych, and then grabs you and pulls you into the water. Watch out. Number 10, Tennessee State Prison. Coming up first on our list of spots to avoid when you're driving through America at its best is Tennessee State Prison. I mean, hell, you probably won't avoid that on a good day, let alone if it's haunted. Though the prison may have shut its doors in 1993, it's remained a popular spot for dark tourists and paranormal enthusiasts who snuck in on some less than legal means to try and scope out if there's still any lingering spirits hanging around old Sparky. The nickname given to the infamous electric chair inside the prison, which served as the last seat for countless inmates. Those who've been brave enough to venture forth have reported hearing unexplained clanging, a dragging of chains, footsteps following them as they walk through the empty halls, and feelings of inescapable dread approaching old Sparky. Maybe that's a sign it's best to let the dead lie. And hey, my friends, hope you're all having a good holiday. But if you're looking for a reason to sneak away from the table for a bit, why not click through, spend the rest of the day with the most amazing gang, watch our videos, and toss a subscribe if you're feeling that generous. Okay, moving on. No more plugs. Don't worry. Number nine, the Wheatlands Plantation. The Wheatlands Plantation has a surprisingly high amount of bloodshed packed onto one property. It's no wonder it's considered one of the most haunted spots in the entire state. In all the years since its construction, at least 70 people have lost their lives there on one property. Through battles in the Revolutionary War and Civil Wars what contributed to a majority of the body count. Although in one famous case, after the estate was willed to the grandson of the owner, the grandson's jealous father tried to take it by force. A brawl ensued and the father was slain by a fire poker. Although the blood has been washed from the floor countless times, visitors say that it keeps reappearing without fail. If you're curious, the Wheatlands Plantation offers guided ghost tours for those looking to set out on a little spectral sightseeing. You wanna go to Evie? You wanna go on a little spectral sightseeing ghost tour, see a ghost? Number eight, the Christopher Taylor House. The Christopher Taylor House is probably the oldest house in the entire state. It was first built all the way back in 1777. It was a fresh new cabin for a fledgling developing country. With a house that old, you're bound to have accumulated some spirits over the years, no doubt. Well, maybe the original owners liked the place so much, they just never wanted to leave. As visitors to the Taylor House have claimed that they see people with a knack for historical cosplay wandering around the property in 17th century attire. Now, this could be people, you know, late to a historical fair, maybe, or it could still be the ghosts of the original owners. There's even rumors that the ghost of Andrew Jackson, America's seventh president and famous bad boy, still haunts the spot. One paranormal investigator claims that they talked to Andrew Jackson's ghost, who told them about a duel he had in 1778. God, he's still going on about that one, eh? Move on, man. It's been like 200 years. Number seven, Cragfont. 
Coming up next is the one and only Craig Font. Craig Font is a historic house in Tennessee, formerly owned by one James Winchester, who was an army general. He built the house personally in 1798, setting out to make a castle fit for an esteemed revolutionary general like Winchester. Winchester lived a quiet life in the home, but future residents wouldn't be so lucky. Country music star Conway Twitty, who no doubt is infinitely more famous for being the butt of a lot of family guy jokes than he is a country music star, once reported after staying at the house he had to leave after he was being pelted by flying objects that were thrown around the house. The Craig Font House offers ghost tours, where guests have reported seeing strange things in the upstairs nursery, claiming that when walking by, you can see candle lights being lit from inside, and sometimes the figures of people in 17th century attire watching and waiting. Number six, Shiloh National Park. Any place where a massive amount of death and suffering is occurred is bound to be a supernatural spot for haunted activity. Well, in 1862, during the Battle of Shiloh, which is part of the Civil War, there were over 23,000 casualties, which at the time was more bloodshed that occurred in any American war up to that point, and all of this was in one single battle at one single national park. So is it any surprise then that park goers claim that sometimes they can see the ponds of the park running red with blood? Or how many stories there are of people coming across the lost ghosts of Civil War soldiers wandering through reliving their final agonizing moments? Nothing more embarrassing, I imagine, than setting down the blanket for the family picnic only to have somebody lumbering over, bleeding, asking if you have any gauze you can put on his bayonet wound. Number five, the Lots House. Another place with deep roots to the Civil War is the Lots House. This house saw the Battle of Franklin, an extremely bloody battle that took the lives of over 8,000 soldiers. The Lots family fled, obviously not looking to be a part of that, and when they returned, they found bodies stacked all over their property. Visitors claim that the Lots family is still trapped inside, and that you can see the ghost of a little girl wandering around lost. And the ghost of a woman can be seen from the second floor crying out for her lost loved ones. If you're curious enough to explore for yourself, the Lots House does offer ghost tours, but I feel like I should tell you, the Travel Channel once dubbed the Lots House the second most terrifying place in America. And number one is your local Denny's at three in the morning. Number four, Meemon Forest. Okay, I'm gonna be totally level with you. When I was started doing this video, I was researching haunted spots in Tennessee, and this one immediately stood out to me, and now I actually wanna go there. The Meemon Forest is an absolutely picturesque, beautiful hiking trail, and it is also said to be home to one of Tennessee's most famous ghosts, the Pig Man. The ghost of a factory worker who was a disfigured horribly, making his face look like that of a pig. And now in death, he wears the head of a pig over his own and wanders through the forest seeking victims and retribution. He's got his own bridge, Pigman Bridge. That was what lit me onto him. And if you're looking for him directly, legend says that if you're looking for an audience, you park your car in the middle of the bridge, flash your headlights three times in a row and call out into the night, Pigman, and he'll make himself known to you. Whether or not you want his attention is another story entirely or whether or not he'll be taking home you as the bacon. Bringing home the bacon, I was trying to do a pun there. You guys can cut that if that didn't work. Doesn't make sense to me saying it either. Number three, the Scott County Jail. The Scott County Jail was built in 1904, and almost a perfect 100 years later, closed its gates in 2008. Although it was a fair bit smaller than the average jail, only ever housing up to 50 inmates at a time during its operational period, it was still a jail susceptible to all the same pitfalls of any other jail, filled with people at their worst, powerful dark energy just swirling through the air. But this prison would get a second chance after serving out its sentence, and would reopen as a paranormal and true crime museum. The new owners claim that the spot is a hot spot for paranormal activity, and photos they've taken from inside the jail from fledgling ghost hunters show shadowy figures manifesting behind people on the tours eerie stuff. Now is it all just stuff to drum up business for their tours or could there really be something lingering in the Scott County Jail? You'll have to go yourself to find out. Number two, the Nashville Cemetery. The Nashville Cemetery is one of the oldest cemeteries in the state, so it's no surprise that it's one of the most haunted as well. Otherwise, it wouldn't be on this list. I'm not gonna tell you about a regular unhaunted cemetery. Among the many bodies laid to their final rest in this plot is one Anne Sanders, the ghost of a woman who, after running away from her husband after an argument, tragically plummeted to her death over a cliff above the Cumberland River. Her husband, distraught, pulled a piece of the boulder she fell off and 
had it carved into her headstone, installing a lantern up top so she could have a light to forever guide her in the afterlife. Isn't that sweet? Naturally, the headstone is very unusual and looks really different from all the other ones, and so it attracts a lot of attention from tourists coming to visit the cemetery. If the stories are to be to be believed, it's also attracting attention from spirits. People say late at night, usually after midnight, that they can hear wailing, crying, and sobbing seemingly emanating from the bizarre boulder headstones. Some stories as well say that they see a man in old attire who comes by at night to keep the lantern lit. Ugh, eerie. And finally, number one, the Bell Witch Cave. Easily the most famous haunted spot in Tennessee and maybe one of the most haunted spots in the entire country. The Bell Witch is a very famous urban legend dating back to the 19th century where a farming family, the Bells, were relentlessly haunted and pursued by an evil entity of an old crone known now as the Bell Witch. There would be horrible creatures lurking around the farm, like these weird bunny dog chimeras. There was a constant laughing that sounded like it was coming from the walls. The children would complain of vermin attacking them in their sleep, and that's just the stuff I remember off my heart. If you look up the Bell Witch haunting, there is so much going on, and I'm surprised there's not more movies about it, to be honest. Once, even, Andrew Jackson, 7th President of the United States, famous President Bad Boy, wanted to visit the Bell Witch property himself because he wanted to see if any of these rumors were true. But when he arrived, his horses outright refused to even approach the property. They froze up by the carriage. If that doesn't tell you the place is haunted, what will? Now, this spot in particular is the cave just a little bit outside the property. The whole place is haunted, but the cave is thought to be where the Bell Witch either made her home or where she fled to after she was finished with John Bell and his family. One legend says that when the Bell children went to explore the cave, one of them was pulled out by their feet by an invisible entity that had warned them not to go exploring inside of it. Now today, you can purchase a ticket to explore the Bell Witch Cave with a tour guide, but really, I'd say you should be careful about it. You should be careful about any cave you're going into, but you should be triply careful about one that famously possibly had a witch. Hold on to your throats. At number 10, we have the Choking Ghost. Is sleep paralysis more common in Hawaii, or are the legends of the Choking Ghosts true? It seems seems that many Hawaiians have reported being choked in their sleep. Now, Some say that they feel as if someone or something is pressing on their chest and trying to suffocate them. Reports go that as people panic, they find that they simply can't scream. Just as they think they're about to die, the ghost leaves and they can breathe again. How awful. I've had sleep paralysis before, but this does sound pretty different. A police officer at the Honolulu airport even said that some of his fellow officers had been attacked by the choking ghost there, so maybe it travels. Is this the origin of the choking demon at number 9? We have the Haunted House of Honolulu. A townhouse in Honolulu on 8th Avenue and Harding has a dark past that has spawned the legend of a deep, deep haunting, a spooky ghoul. It is said that a man murdered his family at the property and that he buried their bodies somewhere on the site. While the bodies of his wife and son were found, his daughters never was. The house seemed to absorb bad energy and anyone who moved there after the murders quickly left. It is said that one of the last people who dared to live in the property was a woman who moved in with two of her friends. It seemed that the spirit took particular offence to them, tackling and trying to strangle them. A police officer was called and they seemed to witness one of the women being choked to death by an invisible hand. Unfortunately, she couldn't be saved. This one is a cross between a Japanese and a Hawaiian urban legend. At number 8, we have the Mujina. It seems that when a number of Japanese people came over to Hawaii, they brought Majina over with them. Thanks, Japan. Majina is a shapeshifter who is able to assume human form. The legend in Japan is that the creature would shapeshift into a monk and travel dark roads at night, stopping strangers and asking them for a cup of tea. Honestly, sounds pretty pleasant. Although, actually, Apparently not pleasant at all. Legend has it that in 1959, a woman at a drive-in cinema in Kahala saw a Magina in the washroom. At first, she thought it was another woman, but she thought it was weird that she'd been spending so long combing her hair. When she looked closer, she noticed that the woman had no features, which was really strange. It seems that the woman who saw her was so freaked out by the faceless figure that she had a nervous breakdown. The sighting was shrugged off as a rumor, but the woman meant 
many years later once again recounted her tale on a local radio station. Since then there have been a number of sightings of the shape shifting beast. Coming in at number 7 we have the Menahoon fairies. The Menahoon are a kind of hybrid of gnomes or leprechauns and fairies in other folk tales. It seems that in Hawaii legend has it that the Menahoon are two feet tall human like creatures that have a very cheeky streak. I love a cheeky streak to be honest with you. Kind of like leprechauns they are said to be great builders. It's said that they even built some of the ancient homes in Hawaii as well as being credited for forming the famous lake on Lin Hu Island. It is said that the Menihu live deep in the lush forests where they live and work. They are also said to emerge and splash in the lakes and oceans late at night. If you hear the sounds of stones plopping in water but see nobody around it is probably a close by Menihu. Sounds like you want to meet them right? Well, well actually you're wrong. While they do sound sweet and benevolent, beware if you ever stumble across one unawares you will immediately be turned to stone, or so the legend says. Coming into number 6 we have the waiting ghost of Honolulu airport. It is said that Honolulu airport is haunted by the desperate ghost of a jilted lover. The ghostly apparition is said to be of a blonde woman who is only ever seen from behind looking out of a window or looking forlorn at the arrivals gate. The the woman is said to wear a long white dress and has been spotted by many airport staff and passengers. The story is that she fell in love with a man who visited the island and promised to marry her, but one day he took off on a flight out of Hawaii never to return. The woman sadly was said to have committed suicide but her spirit could not rest and instead kept on waiting at the airport. She was just standing there waiting for her lover to return but sadly he never does. The police working at the airport get a handful of calls each year asking them to investigate an unresponsive blonde woman with no luggage. Soon they realise that actually she's the woman from the urban legend. Airport officer Ray Durapan spoke about the ghost saying, every time I get the call I get the heebie jeebies, you just get this eerie feeling. Every time we checked it out we never saw her but still I respect stories like that, you have to, you just respect them. I think that's it, you really are supposed to respect a ghost and just give them a bit of distance right? Coming into number 5 we have the ghosts of Pearl Harbor. You don't need to believe in ghosts to accept that Hawaii is still haunted by Pearl Harbor. For those who have visited the scene of one of the United States greatest devastations they will tell you of an eerie loaded atmosphere. On December the 7th 1941, 2335 military personnel and 68 civilians were killed when Japanese bomber planes launched a surprise attack on United States naval base at Pearl Harbor. This is on the island of Oahu. Not only is the history felt but to this day people still believe that ghosts haunt the area. Some even say a ghost plane was recorded flying towards the spot a year later during war years. The plane was seen on an American naval radar as fighter jets were scrambled in response. When they were up there in the skies they found a P-40 fighter. Now this is a plane which had last been used by the American side on the day of the Pearl Harbor attack. The plane was bullet ridden and went down. When the wreckage was intercepted there was no trace of the pilot. Was this a ghost plane? Recently Pearl Harbor was featured on an episode of Ghost Hunters and it seems investigators heard some worrying things in two airplane hangars near the spot of the attack. Coming into number 4 we have the Green Lady of Gulch. Ooh, this is a scary soul, I don't want to meet her. She is said to wander the Wahawa Gulch, a valley in the botanical gardens. It is said that she crossed the valley with her children as she was afraid of cars and didn't want to travel by road. Sadly during her journey one of the children got lost. She scoured the area looking for a missing child but nobody would help her. She returned later with the rest of her children to help her look but then she managed to lose them too. So upset and heartbroken broken it is said that she collapsed and drowned in a stream. To this day sightings have been reported of a green moss covered lady with fish like scales, hair of seaweed and sharp teeth. Sounds spooky. Well actually it gets even spookier. It seems that she now stalks the botanical gardens looking for children to steal. She's even been spotted lurking at an elementary school nearby the area. Stay well away. Coming in at number 3 we have the goddess of fire. 
Pele. In Hawaii, it is believed that there is a goddess of fire, lightning, and volcanoes by the name of Pele. The story goes that she originated in Tahiti but was sent away by her father because of her difficult temper and her desire to seduce her sister's husband. Babe, no. It seems that all fiery disasters in Hawaii are blamed on Pella and explained as a reaction to her having a feud with a lover. She doesn't just stay in the volcanoes either. She's said to wander the lands in female form, tall, young, and beautiful, or sometimes as an old woman with a white dog when she wants to test people. If people are kind to her in disguise, she rewards them. If they're not, she destroys their homes. It is considered to be very bad luck to remove any rocks from the island, so if you you visit Hawaii, do make sure you don't take any of it back with you, if not you might feel Pella's curse. It is also considered highly disrespectful to prod lava as it flows or throw anything at it. In order to appease Pella, residents leave leaves and flowers on cracks previously caused by lava flow. In May 2018, Hawaiian residents left offerings for Pella as lava flowed down from a mountain. The Killar volcano destroyed homes near the base. Was she angry? Locals think, yeah. This one is also related to the fiery temptress, but more specifically to one of her lovers. I actually guess this is totally more bizarre than it is scary, but I wanted to include it anyway. Coming into number two, we have the no pork on Pali rule. Legend has it that a person should never carry pork over the Pali Highway. This is the road that connects Honolulu and Windward, Ahu. It seems that there is an invisible line of territory on the bridge, one side of which belongs to Kamapua, a pig god. It seems that he had a tempestuous relationship with Pella, and she is the one who will not allow pork to be taken from one side to another. The story goes that if you even try and take pork over on foot, you'll feel a strange but strong force resisting you. If you try and drive over the bridge with pork, the car will stall and not work until you throw the meat away. Some say the old woman with a white dog will appear and the dog will then eat the meat. Others have claimed that when they turn around to look at the pork they've tossed out, it's miraculously disappeared. On a Hawaiian news website, I read a story about a bus driver who was really angry when his bus stalled. He turned around and shouted to his passengers that someone must have brought pork aboard. When he found out that was true, he tossed it out and the bus worked again. Finally, coming into number one, this is one of the most prevalent Hawaiian urban legends and pretty scary. We have the Hawakapo, the torchbearers. Often called the night marchers, the Hawakapo are ancient Hawaiian warriors that are now jobbed with escorting newly dead spirits to the afterlife. They're a bit like a more musical band of grim reapers. The torchbearers walk the land carrying, you guessed it, torches, but also weapons and drums which they play and chant. There have been sightings of the torchbearers, but if you ever come across one, you must not look them in the eye, as they may march you to the afterlife too. The only way you can be saved is if one of your relatives is in the tribe who can vouch for you. You know that the Hawaka Ippo are nearby if you hear distant drumming, hear conch shell horns, and see faint torch lights, and even smell a faint foul odour. Rumours and reports of torchbearer sightings have been rife over the years and are ingrained in Hawaiian folklore. Number 10, White Rock Lake Park, Dallas. In 1943, the story of the ghost of White Rock was published in a Texas folklore publication, Backwoods to Border. The story goes that there was a young couple who was looking for somewhere they could be alone. They drove down a deserted road and parked on the shore of the lake. When they turned their headlights on, they saw someone walking towards them. A woman dressed in a white sheer dress who was soaking wet was coming closer and closer to their car. Concerned, they asked the woman if she was alright, and the woman then spoke and said, I'm sorry to intrude, and I would not under any other other circumstances, but I must find a way home immediately. My boat overturned, the others are safe, but I must get home. The couple agreed to take her home, and she gave them an address not too far away. As they drove off, the driver turned back to ask for some directions, but the back seat was empty and soaking wet. When they arrived at the address the woman in white gave them, a man answered the door, and when he was told what happened, he replied, You are the third couple who's come to me with this story. Three weeks ago, while sailing on White Rock Lake, my daughter drowned. Many, many sightings have been reported since. Number nine. The Moody Mansion, Galveston. Before I get to the next entry, make sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying the videos so that I can keep bringing you the most amazing content. Before it was known as the Moody Mansion, it was the Willis Mansion. Built for Narcissa Willis in 1895, this 31 room mansion boasts a Romanesque architecture with ornate features like stained glass windows and hand carved woodwork. She commissioned the house to be built against her late husband's wishes after he'd passed, spending the family inheritance in the process, something her 10 children did. 
did not appreciate. Unfortunately, she didn't get to live there long since she passed away in 1899, and it was then purchased by the Moody's. In 1900, a hurricane destroyed much of Galveston and took the lives of some 6,000 people, but strangely, the mansion stayed standing, untouched. Perhaps it was the ghost of Narcissa keeping her prized possession safe? Visitors to the house constantly report faces and spectral images showing up in photographs taken in the house, prompting paranormal investigators to come here to do research. Number 8. San Fernando Cathedral, San Antonio The oldest church in the entire state of Texas has stood tall for nearly 300 years, and in that time it's collected many, many spirits, some of whom were buried within the walls of the church themselves. When searching for paranormal activity here, one of the first things researchers often see is a white horse trotting in front of the cathedral, only to disappear soon after. It's said that the horse was a gift from an Apache tribe that was refused and killed. Other ghosts that walk the grounds include that of a man dressed in black clothes from the 18th century who follows tours and then suddenly disappears, as well as those of monks who can be seen and heard standing at the back of the pews during services. Number 7. Demons Road, Huntsville Formerly known as Bowden Road, this seldom traveled dirt road is creepy enough without the ghost stories. It's overgrown, has misshapen trees, and in the dark seems like something right out of a horror movie. But there is at least one notable spirit who haunts travelers who dare come through here. A boy on a tricycle with glowing eyes has been reported by many people riding down the road. He appears in the middle of the road and stares you down until you approach him. And once you do, a thick fog rises from the ground and he disappears. There's one more story about Demon's Road that I found super interesting though. Two friends heard that the road was haunted and decided to check it out for themselves. And as they drove down it in the middle of the night, the trees seemed to shift and shake. And then they arrived at their destination at the end of Demon's Road, which just so happens to be the next entry on our list. Number 6. Martha Chapel Cemetery. When the two men drove up to the cemetery, which was named after the first person who was buried there, Martha Palmer, moonlight was piercing through the clouds and lighting the headstones and epitaphs before them. They both got out to crack a few brews and explore the cemetery, but when the driver decided to pour some on one of the graves, a skeletal hand burst from the ground, grabbing at his ankle and dragging him into the dirt. His friend and passenger ran over to help, kicking at the zombie-like arm and dragging him away. After he was freed, the driver called out for them to escape, and when he got back to his car, he looked back, but didn't see his friend who supposedly just saved his life. He was actually still sitting in the passenger seat, asleep. And as he peeled out and drove back down Demon's Road, his passenger slumped over into his lap, and the driver realized that his friend had died. Allegedly, he passed away from a heart attack on the drive to the cemetery. And in 2018, a video surfaced from someone who was exploring the Google Street View of the area and saw a ghostly image appear inside the cemetery. A creepy, pale face of a boy was behind it tree in one shot and missing in the next. There was also a large black figure in the background that did not seem to be human. Spooky stuff. Number 5. Miss Molly's Hotel, Fort Worth Originally built in 1910 as the Palace Rooms, Fort Worth's first bed and breakfast, Miss Molly's, has had quite the history. During Prohibition, it became a speakeasy called the Oasis. In the 1940s, it became a brothel known as the Guyette Hotel, and after that was shut down, it became Miss Molly's. There have been many, many reports of unwanted guests appearing here, most notably those of Jake the Cowboy and Josie King, the former madam of the brothel, both of whom are seen as full body apparitions. Workers and visitors alike have witnessed them walking through locked doors, books being thrown, items disappearing and reappearing in random places, and strangely, change being neatly organized in certain rooms. In room 3, indents on the edge of the bed have appeared as though someone were suddenly sitting on it and shaking the bed while guests sleep. You know, I think little Richard said it best. Good golly, Miss Molly. Number 4. The Grove, Jefferson This house, built in 1861, has had many, many owners over the years, and most would agree that the place is cursed. Since its construction, most of the owners of the house have experienced some sort of tragedy. The original owner lost his cotton factory due to a freak flood, and a lynch mob committed horrible atrocities on the properties, where four freed slaves were brutalized and hung from trees on the property. The spirits of these men are said to be the most active spirits on the property. Later owners saw multiple family members take their own lives on the property, and some developed rare diseases. The spirits here are quite restless, and there are reports abound of books flying off shelves, mirrors shattering, voices telling people to do horrible things to themselves, and full-on ghostly apparitions that appear and disappear at will. All of these things show that the Grove definitely belongs on this list. Number 3. The Black Swan Inn, San Antonio There is no relation to the 2010 film here, but the strange happenings have messed up people 
people's minds just as much as Natalie Portman's characters was. The land that the inn now stands on has major ties to indigenous peoples from some 7,000 years ago, and is also a former battle site for the war between the Texan and Mexican army in 1842. But 35 years later, a dairy farm was founded on the land by a German immigrant. The blood soaked soil here seems to be a bad place to build as tragedy struck many who lived on the land. The farmer's wife passed away from cancer she developed shortly after moving in, and two years later, he decided to join her by taking his own life. Soon after, the property was purchased by two families and renamed the White Gables. However, at the age of 38, one of the new owners, Jolene Street, also passed away due to cancer. And like the owners before them, her husband hung himself in the bedroom. The inn that now stands has had reports of the spirits of the former owners wandering the halls with their necks broken, pushing guests off of their beds, and generally getting up to no good. No matter which way you slice it, this property seems cursed. Number 2. The Hill House, Mineral Springs In part 2, I talked about the haunted Baker Hotel in Mineral Springs, but it seems that the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, because just behind the Baker Hotel lies one of the most haunted places in Texas, the Hill House. Many people stay in this house, attempting to witness paranormal activity, and most of them get more than they bargained for and don't make it through the night without leaving terrified. The owners of the house, who purchased it in 2017 knowing its haunted history, rent it out to individuals and paranormal research teams looking to witness something terrifying. And apparently about 50% of them, including the professionals, leave within the first night. This is due to a spirit or entity that resides here named Toby, who growls loudly in your ear to get out, knocks things over, slams doors, and even gets violent. Videos show all sorts of terrible things happening to people who stay here like a woman who was taunting the spirits, trying to make something happen, being viciously pulled off of her bed, leaving her bruised. And when she returned a year later, for some reason, she was scratched by something invisible in the room so badly that blood leaked through her shirt. Whoever Toby is, it seems like he doesn't want anyone else to come into his house and will do anything to keep them out. Number one. Old Town Spring. While the rest of the entries on this list and my other two videos have had some terrifying places, our number one spot belongs to an entire town that is haunted, and some even say cursed. Allegedly, in the 1700s, a curse was cast by members of the Akokisa tribe on the town and its people who stole their land and killed their kin. And this curse has followed the town all the way through history, continuing even today. Every building in this small town has a haunting story, and I'll share a few of them with you now, but I encourage you to look this up because there are so many more that I just can't get to today. The Whitehall House was built in 1895 and has since been converted into a funeral home, and they have a special special room upstairs designated as the ghost room, where the spirits of the dead who haunt the building can reside. Figures are seen walking through the door, dancing on the balcony, and heard inside. One of the previous owners decided to renovate the room and experienced, quote, violent spirit activity. And it took years for the ghosts to calm back down. There are now two new clauses in the lease agreement for the building. The ghost room is not to be disturbed, and you can't break the lease due to a haunting. Many of the buildings in town can be seen with trees growing close closely and even through some of the buildings, and allegedly the curse placed upon the town ensured that if anyone cut down any trees, they would experience a terrible fire. And this has happened inexplicably many times to many different buildings in the town, and some quite recent. There is also a hanging tree, where a judge sentenced more than 60 people to death, which is an insane rate, even by the standards of any time. And the old ice house, which was used to store corpses waiting to be sent to the funeral home has a heavy energy, and everything goes quiet when you get near it. And it's burned down countless times. You know, with all of these creepy things going on throughout the years, it is no wonder people think Old Town Spring is cursed, and a no-brainer that it ended up number one on this list. And it might even be above the number ones in part one and two. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Number 10, Satan's Castle San Bernardino. Yes, this place is called Satan's Castle, and it's a no from me. Satan's Castle, it's on a mountainous region that is filled with both religious and satanic lore dating back to the 19th century. There are said to be underground tunnels linking to various points of interest across the mountain, which were used during the Prohibition era. These tunnels were created mostly for transportation and smuggling booze, but also served for darker 
other purposes. One of these tunnels is rumored to connect a Catholic church to Satan's castle. It is said to have been the grounds for dark ritualistic practices which included both human and animal sacrifices along with other dark ceremonies. Not to mention inside one of the rooms a pentagram used to be painted on the ground. Local Christians painted over it with the John 3.16 verse, but the pentagram always bled through. Definitely sounds satanic to me, and I will not be visiting there. Number 9. Preston Castle, Ioni the Preston School of Industry, also known as Preston Castle, was a reform school that opened in June 1894 and was considered one of the oldest and best known reform schools in the United States. The boys there grew their own food, raised livestock, and learned farming trades. Additionally, there was a print shop, bakery, and cobbler shop where the boys could learn skills for self-preservation in the real world. The superintendent controlled the life inside the school, and discipline was extreme. Starvation, isolation, and public paddling and lashings, and severe strategies were common at Preston. Now, this school has seen a lot of death. There are 17 men buried on the school grounds because they died there. Samuel Goines had his life ended after attempting to escape from the school. In 1950, Preston's head housekeeper, Anna Corbin, was beaten to death in the school's basement as well, and they never found out who did it. Employees and visitors believe that these young Young men are still haunting the school, which only closed in 1960, by the way. Those who have toured the grounds since have reported many strange sights and sounds, slamming doors, falling objects, disembodied voices, and ghostly physical contact. Number 8. Camp Pendleton, Area 41, San Diego Camp Pendleton is a coastal marine corps base with a dark history. This place is divided up into sections, and Area 41 is haunted. Locks have been tampered with, furniture displaced, items gone missing, and strange noises are heard throughout the camp. Many think that this is done by one broken hearted marine in particular. This man was in love and had recently asked his girlfriend to marry him. After she had said yes, he thought his life was going great, but it didn't last long. The Marine was in his housing unit when his fiance got a hold of him and told him that she was ending the relationship. He was so upset that he ended his life in a second story room of the barracks. Now, some Marines are convinced his spirit remains in the area and haunts Area 41 in particular. A general feeling of unease is common here, and to this day, Marines claim that they hear the faint sound of a man's softly humming the Jeopardy game show theme song around the grounds. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Number 7. The Hotel de Coriando, San Diego Hotel de Coriando is a historic hotel that opened in 1888. Kate Morgan has haunted this hotel since 1892, the year she checked in and awaited the arrival of her husband. The two were traveling con artists, and not surprisingly, her husband never showed up, and four days later, Kate was found dead at the bottom of an outdoor staircase leading to the Coronado Beach. Today, those who check into Kate's room which is now room 3312, have had spooky experiences to say the least. Curtains blowing even though the windows are closed, objects moved by unseen hands, murmuring sounds, and even sightings of Kate walking down the hallways and peering out the windows have all been reported. Her ghost is often seen both in the hotel and on the beach. Now room 3519, formerly room 3502, is also haunted. Once a maid's room, it's been the site of numerous paranormal occurrences such as objects moving around by themselves. Number 6. The Whaley House, San Diego The Whaley House is the oldest brick structure in Southern California and was the home of Thomas Whaley and his family. At various times, it also housed Whaley's General Store, San Diego's Second County Courthouse, and the first commercial theater in San Diego. The house has witnessed more history than any other building in the city, and it is extremely haunted. One of the most infamous ghosts there is the spirit of Yankee Jim Robinson. Yankee Jim was hanged in the gallows where the house now stands in 1852 after being convicted of stealing horses. Thomas Whaley himself, who owned and lived in the house with his family years later, said they could hear heavy footsteps going up and down the stairs. Now visitors have reported cold spots and the feeling of their chest and throat 
about tightening within the home. Others claim to have seen Yankee Jim 2, an apparition that appears and disappears when you get too close. Today, and for many years, visitors to the house have also reported seeing Thomas. They usually see him wearing a frock coat and pantaloons standing on the second story landing. Others have seen his wife Anna, usually floating around in the garden or the downstairs room. Her ghost, which appears white and billowy, seems to just drift about and then disappears. Number 5. Winchester Mystery House San Jose Now after finding out what this place is, I really want to visit here. I mean just by the name Mystery House, it's cool. Now some backstory on the house, Sarah Winchester lived a tragic yet interesting life. She married William Wirt Winchester in 1862 who was a very wealthy man. Sadly though, her husband, mother and father-in-law all passed away within the same year. To deal with her grief, she moved to California after gaining a large inheritance from her husband. Then on top of all of that, Sarah was being haunted by the spirits of those whose lives were ended by the Winchester rifle which her husband's company had invented. After her husband passed away, a psychic told her to evade the spirits, she would need to move out west, buy a home, and build non-stop. She took 36 years to construct the home, and this house has 6 kitchens, 2,000 doors, 10,000 windows, 17 chimneys, 160 rooms, and many doors and stairs that lead to nowhere. Workers and visitors swear they hear howling at night, loud creaking, and sometimes the kitchen smells like someone is actively cooking. But regardless if you believe in ghosts or not, the house is absolutely stunning. Number 4. Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, Los Angeles the Hollywood Roosevelt is considered to be one of the most haunted hotels in Los Angeles. It first opened its doors in 1927 and was a frequent home to Marilyn Monroe, who often stayed in the second floor cabana. Interestingly, the doors to this hotel are still open, allowing visitors to spend the night in Marilyn's suite, and some people claim to have seen Marilyn's ghost smiling and blowing kisses at them in their hotel mirrors. Hotel workers often talk about seeing the ghost of Charlie Chaplin and feel temperatures drop quickly from one room to the next. The apparition of Montgomery Clift has been blamed for patting guest shoulders and watching maids in room 928 where he stayed for three months while filming from here to eternity. The ghost of Carol Lombard has also been spotted floating around the upper floors and in the Blossom Room where the first Oscars were held, two ghosts have been spotted, a presence of a tuxedoed man and a presence of a man in a white suit. Seems like if you want to meet a dead celebrity, the Roosevelt Hotel is the place to go. Number 3. Alcatraz San Francisco Bay The famous maximum security prison Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary earned a reputation as one of the most brutal and inhumane prisons in the country during its day. The strong currents around the island and cold water temperatures made escape nearly impossible and the prison became one of the most notorious in American history. The prison closed in 1963 and the island is now a major tourist attraction. A total of 36 prisoners made 14 escape attempts, 23 were caught alive, 6 had their lives ended by guards during their escape, 2 drowned, and 5 are listed as missing and presumed drowned. Now, During its 29 years in use, Alcatraz held some of the most notorious American criminals including Al Capone, George Machine Gun Kelly, and Bumpty Johnson. Today it's a tourist attraction that many believe to be haunted. Inexplicable events happen like the sound of someone playing the banjo. Many believe this to be the spirit of Al Capone who spent his last days at the prison playing a banjo in the shower room to avoid being injured in the yard. The smell of smoke, the sounds of cell door slamming, disembodied voices, moaning and screams have also all been reported. Number 2. Queen Mary, Long Beach Queen Mary is a retired British ocean liner that sailed from 1936 to 1967. She sailed to the port of Long Beach, California where she is permanently docked. The city of Long Beach bought the ship to serve as a tourist attraction, featuring restaurants, a museum and a hotel, but claims were made that the ship was haunted. There are resident spirits including Jackie, the little girl who haunts the first class pool, John Petter who was crushed by a watertight door, senior second officer William Eric Stark who accidentally drank dry cleaning fluid instead of gin, and the cook who was baked alive by his own kitchen staff during World War II. But most are
arguably the most notorious location on the ship for paranormal activity is room B340. Reports claim someone was knocking on the door in the middle of the night, bathroom lights turning on by themselves, the sink faucet turning on and off on its own, and unexplained bathroom doors shutting. Some guests have reported the covers of their bed being pulled off while asleep and waking to see a dark figure standing at the foot of the bed. There are even more stories about this place, but I don't have enough time to fit them all in. If you're really interested in Queen Mary, I say do some homework on it because it definitely gets creepier. And coming in at number one is the Cecil Hotel, Los Angeles. The Cecil Hotel opened in 1925 as a well furnished hostelry frequented by respectable people people, but that didn't last long. As downtown became more and more dangerous, the Cecil became a place where bad people stayed, like the Night Stalker aka Richard Ramirez and Austrian killer Jack Underweger spent time there. The Black Dahlia was rumored to have had her last drink at the hotel bar before she turned up dead a few miles away. In 1962, Pauline Otten jumped from the ninth floor window, ending her life. That same year, Julia Moore jumped from an eighth floor window. and. Helen Green from the seventh floor in 1954. The Cecil Hotel may have rebranded itself recently as the Stay on Main, but it just can't shake its reputation as a place where scary things happen. In 2013, the body of Canadian tourist Elisa Lamb was found in the hotel's rooftop cistern. Her body was discovered by a hotel maintenance worker investigating complaints of flooding and low water pressure. And yes, people had been showering in and drinking that water. Ugh. And last but not least, the ghost of a boy has reportedly been photographed outside a fourth floor window. Spooky. Starting us off at number 10, The Hanging Jail. Actually called the Beauregard Parish Jail, it opened in 1915 and it was actually kind of a big deal because it had extraordinary amenities for a jail. Each cell had a window and a bathroom and cells on the top floor even had a skylight. But despite its beautiful architecture, it was also the site of Louisiana's first double execution. In 1926, two men were committed after killing and robbing a taxi driver and sentenced to be hanged. They claimed innocence, but still the verdict passed and the two men died in the jail, giving it the infamous name. It remained open until 1981 and now a museum, it's believed to be haunted by the two men along with other inmates who felt they were unjustly put behind bars. Many have reported being pushed or hearing voices while visiting and some have even captured photos of strange, inexplicable, shadowy figures lurking on the porch and window, leaving no other explanation than to assume the jail remains a haunted and terrifying place to visit. Coming in at number 9. Pleasant Hall. This story has two versions, so I will let you decide which one you think is true. Once upon a time, while attending the Louisiana State University, a resident tragically took her life in the now infamous room 312. One story says the girl killed her boyfriend in a fit of rage and then, shocked at her actions, took her own life because she could not live with what she had done. The other story claims the girl jumped out of the window of her room and fell to her impending doom, terrifying the students on campus that witnessed the horrifying sight. But which one really happened? Well, it seems that is the hard part to find out. But what's not difficult to know is that the spirit of the girl remains, haunting Pleasant Hall to this day. Students have reported seeing her ghost roam the campus and hearing strange noises coming from the other side of room 312. And sometimes at night, when you least expect it, the door to room 312 will open and shut all on its own. Coming in at number 8, St. Louis Cemetery number 1. Regarded as the city of the dead, the St. Louis Cemetery number 1 holds more ghost stories than you'd want to encounter in a lifetime. In the span of a mere block, the cemetery has over 700 tombs and over 100,000 bodies are known to be buried at the site. Most famously, it is the burial site of Voodoo Queen Marie Laveau, the most revered and feared practitioner in New Orleans. 
Island's history. Reports of her ghost have detailed her in her signature red and white turban and claim she will suddenly appear out of nowhere and then vanish from plain sight just as fast. Visitors have experienced scratching, pinching, shoving, suddenly becoming ill and even hearing her haunting voice echo across the cemetery, sending many that have dared to visit running for the hills. So just be careful if you choose to stop by. If you aren't careful, she could curse you for life. Next up at number 7, the Calcasia Courthouse. The history of capital punishment is a torrid one, and as it turns out, this courthouse is actually famous for just that. Back in the 1940s, there was a woman named Tony Jo McHuston. She lived quite a tumultuous life involved in dr and her local brothel, but one day she fell in love with a man who frequented her establishment named Claude Henry. And so they got married and she started to really turn her life around. But after Claude was sent to jail for 50 years for killing someone, something inside Tony snapped. She planned to bust Claude out of jail with a friend, but in the process of stealing a car, killed the owner and left him in a ditch. She was caught and sentenced to death and would become the first first ever woman to be executed by the electric chair in Louisiana. It said her spirit still haunts the courthouse, locking doors and messing around with the filing systems during the day. But steer clear at night, as residents report you can smell her burning hair and hear her unruly screams echo through the streets. Coming in at number 6, Pea Farm. Nicknamed the Pea Farm, it is not actually a farm nor does it have anything to do with peas. It is however an old abandoned prison. The facility was in operation between 1905 to 1950 and rumor has it that life was incredibly rough and difficult at the pea farm for prisoners, even more so than your typical prison. Beatings and lashings were commonplace and even killing of prisoners was nothing to bat an eye at. So it's no surprise that those whose life may have ended here have stuck around, maybe trying to seek revenge on those who hurt them. Today the prison is strictly off limits to visitors, but those that walk past have reported hearing shrieks and other strange noises coming from inside the abandoned building. Maybe no one is allowed for a good reason. Next up at number 5, Bonnie and Clyde's Ambush Site. Maybe you've heard of the infamous couple, but just in case you haven't, let me catch you up. They were notorious bank robbers across Louisiana and Texas during the Great Depression in America and made quite a name for themselves. In recent years, it has been suggested their exploits were exaggerated, but one thing that wasn't is how they died. The day was May 23rd, 1934 and police from both Louisiana and Texas managed to corner them in their stolen car. Authorities fired more than a hundred bullets at the couple and as the story goes, you could hear Bonnie's scream from the next town over. Residents claim that if you visit the site of their death, the ghosts of the couple will make themselves well known to you. Apparitions have shown in photographs and some have even heard what they believe to be Bonnie's scream as she took her last few breaths on this earth. Coming in at number 4, Oak Alley. Once upon a time, it was one of the largest plantations in Louisiana, and just like every other of its kind, it has a dark past. Since its dark days, it has turned into a bed and breakfast and historical site, but the people that were tortured remain, haunting the ground and terrorizing visitors. Numerous accounts have claimed to hear unexplained sounds like blood curdling screams in the middle of the night or the sound of a horse drawn carriage clopping along the path. Some visitors have even experienced being touched or grabbed by an unseen entity and one investigator got so scared he dropped his camera while trying to capture a spirit. Paranormal investigators have managed to capture several EVPs that indicate unhappy ghosts lingering the property and though no one has been hurt staying here yet, tread carefully as you never know just when you could set the spirits off. Coming in at number 3. Alice's grave. Alice died in the 19th century, and although she had a fairly normal life while alive, her death and afterlife were anything but expected. She was laid to rest in an above ground grave, but soon after, many of the townspeople began to question was the grave haunted? Or worse, was Alice a witch? As the legend goes, in the middle of the night, the large slab of marble covering her grave was removed on three separate occasions, and each time, Time, her remains were left outside the grave. No one stepped forward admitting to have moved 
Alice or the Slab, which led people to believe that Alice was a witch trying to escape her grave and haunt the town. Eventually, large iron bars were placed over the grave in an attempt to hold her spirit inside. But this hasn't seemed to stop her, as locals claim you can still see her wandering the cemetery at night. But just exactly what is she looking for? That is one of the many unanswered questions that leave visitors terrified, unsure if she comes in peace or if she is out for revenge. Next up at number 2, the Manchac Swamp. While many are familiar with the legendary voodoo priestess Marie Laveau, she was not the only one of her time. Julia Brown was a well respected healer and midwife who resided in a small village called Frenier. At first, she loved caring for her village, but after some time, she started to feel disrespected by her community, feeling as though they were taking her gifts for granted. Julia began scaring the village, telling them dooming predictions about their impending deaths, and the townspeople, unsure if she was placing a curse or foretelling their future, became very troubled. Shortly before her own death, she said, One day I'm gonna die and I'm gonna take all you with me. And just days after she was buried, three entire villages were destroyed by a hurricane and hundreds of lives were lost. To this day, many believe the spirit of Julia Brown haunts the swamp, and visitors have reported hearing blood curdling screams and the sound of her voice singing cryptic and frightening songs, terrifying all those that dare walk by. And last up in our number one spot, La Lorie Mansion. Arguably one of the most infamous buildings in all of Louisiana, La Lorie Mansion was once home to the cruel and torturous Madame Delphine La Lorie. Even in her time, she was regarded as a monster and was known to have her slaves taken from her on more than one occasion due to their outrageous mistreatment. In 1834, a fire broke out in her mansion, and when police and fire marshals arrived at the site, they found one of her slaves chained to the stove, claiming to have started the fire to try and take her own life to escape the cruelty. Another seven victims were found in her attic, suspended from the ceiling, mutilated and barely alive, stating to have been imprisoned for months. Once news broke out of her cruelties, citizens attacked the house and demolished everything they could. While the original building no longer stands, the grounds it stood on are some of the most haunted in all of Louisiana, as it's believed nearly 100 people lost their lives under Madame Delphine's cruel supervision. Visitors have reported feeling the violent touches of ghostly hands, and a medium that visited stated that there is a very dark demonic entity that resides within the building's walls. So just tread carefully, should you choose to visit, the spirits that live there are not too thrilled by visitors in their home. Getting out scared in at number 10 is John Soden and his house in Los Angeles. It's time to brace yourselves because this story is pretty dark. Back on January 15th, 1947, a woman's body was found on this lot. Her murder became one of the most reported murders of the time because of the gruesome way in which her body had been found. She was surgically cut in half from the waist down, washed, cleaned, and posed by her killer. Residents who have since lived there have reported hearing strange noises, such as the dragging of heavy chains, heavy footsteps, and voices calling their name. It's actually a really nice looking house, but it is full of negative energy, and it is also believed that anyone who steps foot in this house will be cursed. So, you know what? I'm good at just admiring the architecture from like, Google Maps. I don't even have to see it in real life. The Queen Mary ship creeps onto this list at number 9. I had to include this one on this list because people technically did live on this ship and it is referred to as one of the most haunted ships in America. It was operated since the 1930s, but now it is permanently docked in Long Beach, California, and it is used as a hotel. As nice as this might sound, while well, guests on board will often experience sleepless nights, there have been a bunch of scary paranormal activities reported on this ship. Guests will say that they will hear a creepy kid laughter in the middle of the night, or things will be flown across the room. And room B340 has been taken out of rotation after there's been numerous violent poltergeist activities. It's actually impossible to keep someone in that room for the entire night because they will just get scared away. For me, I would probably last um, a minute. 
Probably not even that long. Oh. Up next, number eight, we have the Stanley Warehouse. This is a notorious haunted house that has a long reputation of being one of the most haunted places in Orange County. One of the most talked about frightening ghosts that live here is the previous owner. During her golden year, she was unable to climb up the stairs, so after her death, she is known to appear in spirit on the staircase blocking others from going up. Visitors have reported that they found it difficult or even impossible to get past her and go up the stairs. Oh, and let's not forget about the spirit of an old man who you can hear whispering nasty and offensive things while you sleep and if you visit the house you will be able to hear a baby crying upstairs but when you go into the nursery no one is there that would freak me out I think I would want to visit this house just to see if I can make it upstairs but you'll never convince me to sleep there I mean I just value my life way too much and I gotta find out what happens next on bachelor in paradise moving into number seven we have the battery point lighthouse this is an iconic lighthouse located in Crescent City, California, and it was built back in 1856. There has been numerous reports of strange and creepy occurrences happening there. Lighthouse workers and guests say that they have heard what sounded like someone wearing large boots stomping around. There have also been reports of items moving, cold spots, and the feeling that someone was touching them when no one was even there. Apparently, there are three ghosts that haunt this lighthouse because, you know, one just isn't enough. No one seems to know who they are or why they are haunting this place. All I know for sure is that we should just board up the place and just leave it alone, just forget about it. Every now and again, a visitor will feel someone tapping on their shoulder or furniture will move by itself. I mean, that is definitely not okay and definitely you don't want to be there on a stormy night. Bad things are said to happen there when it rains. The Whaley House haunts us in at number six. This house was built on an old site where the public executions used to occur. So yeah, <laughs> I would say this place is pretty damn haunted. Over the years, many descendants of the Whaley family lived and died in that house. And when the house was being restored, workers and visitors began to notice strange and mysterious sounds, sightings, smells, and encounters. A lot of people reported hearing scary noises and loud footsteps that left footprints. You can actually visit this house and take a tour, but I'd rather not. I'd rather spend my time at Disneyland, you know, where I know it's 100% safe and uh, not too scary, or, or is it? This place is littered with scary ghosts and a lot of unsettling things have happened there. I'm getting the chills just thinking about it, so I gotta move on. Let's move on, let's see what we have next. Well, you know what, the Red House jumps into number five next on our list. This is an old abandoned house that is occupied by a vengeful spirit. Back in the beginning of the 20th century, an engaged couple used to live here. Well, on the night before their wedding, they had a huge fight and the man pushed his fiance down the stairs. She died and he buried her in the backyard. Well, today she has been seen haunting the house and nearby businesses. People have reported that she is wearing her wedding dress that is covered in blood. Is it her own blood? And local legends say that if you step in front of her, she'll rush forward and drag you to her gravesite and you will never be seen again. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna be visiting this creepy thing anytime soon or any of these haunted houses on this list. I'm just not brave enough. Like I told you, I hear wind and I run. I see something just a bit bigger than a chihuahua and I run. Okay, the Glen Tavern Inn creeps us in at number four. This house was built in 1911, but don't be fooled by its beautiful exterior. This house has a very ugly past. Back during the prohibition, they converted the third floor into a speakeasy, brothel, and gambling den. And one of the most infamous rooms is room 307, which is said to be haunted by two ghosts. The amount of paranormal activity here is very high. Visitors said that they saw children running through the halls, and some say that they've seen an angry man and a one-eyed female. There are also reports of the spirits playing the piano in the middle of the night, and others have said that their stuff was stolen. There have also been a lot of deaths that have occurred in this room. A cowboy was shot to death, and a woman was beheaded and left in a closet. So needless to say, this place has a lot of angry and vengeful spirits. Los Coches Adobe makes it onto this list at number three. This might be one of the most terrifying places in California, and you know what? 
what's even more terrifying? The fact that I probably pronounced it wrong. This building is located on an old mine site. However, it was covered up because on one horrific day, an accident occurred in the mine and about 30 workers were trapped inside. All of them lost their lives, so it's no wonder that this place is haunted. Locals and visitors have said that they heard the screams of the trapped miners echoing from the property and there are also numerous reports of a lady in black and a male phantom walking around the grounds. Some people have even said that they've seen the ghost of a hanging man from a tree. And then we have the dark force. Locals say that this force is strong enough to throw you to the ground and then you can feel heavy footsteps walking on your back preventing you from getting up. There are a bunch of people who have said that they will never step foot in this place again and I'm one of them. I don't blame them. Number two we have the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose. Since it was built in 1884, the mansion is said to be haunted by ghosts who were killed with Winchester rifles. Construction began in 1884 and never stopped until the owner died in 1992. The owner believed that her house was haunted by victims and the only way to keep them quiet was to keep on building. The building was opened by the public in 1923 and the staff and the visitors have reported seeing mischievous spirits who liked to torment them. So yeah, don't be fooled by this beautiful house because it is actually full of ugly surprises and scary ghosts lurking in every corner. But for those of you guys who are either brave or really naive, well, you can actually take a tour there and see all of the ghosts and scary paranormal activities for yourself. Alcatraz tops this list at number one. Prisons are often the site of restless spirits and hauntings and Alcatraz is no exception to that. This prison was the site of violent activities and it held some of the most dangerous criminals in the world. Alcatraz is actually a breeding ground for the paranormal. One of the most feared presents on the island is known as The Thing. This creepy spirit has red glowing eyes and it has been recently seen by visitors and also by the prison staff when Alcatraz was in operation. Other common reportings are of creepy voices, sobbing, screaming and the banging of cell doors. Some have even said that they felt as if they were being touched, felt cold and they even had an emotional outburst of either sadness or anger just out of nowhere. Number 10, Bragg Road, Saratoga. The big thicket in southeast Texas is a dense forested area that runs along the Alabama border, and there are very few roads that cut through it. One of the most infamous is Bragg Road. In 1904, the road was built as a rail line to connect the now abandoned town of Bragg to the now thriving Saratoga. While the rails have long since been torn up, some ghostly reminders of the past still remain. When you drive down this lonely eight mile long dirt road at night, you, like thousands of others before you, are sure to see what are known as the ghost lights. Basketball sized orbs of light that float and dance through the air, even changing in color according to some. There are a few stories on what these lights actually are. The most popular story is that a tragedy occurred on a midnight train run. The conductor, sleep deprived from a long journey through the state, needed some fresh air to wake himself up. He stuck his head out the window and in a freak accident he was decapitated by a tree. And now his spirit is wandering the road searching for his lost head. The other prevailing theory Theory is that the light is a ghostly lantern belonging to a groom whose bride left him at the altar. He went searching for her in the forest at night but has still never found her to this day. Number 9. Baker Hotel, Mineral Wells. Mineral Wells is known for its, you guessed it, mineral rich water. In the 1880s, people would travel from all over Texas to drink some and it supposedly had healing powers and could cure almost any ailment. And with that kind of tourist attraction, you need somewhere for all of these folks to stay. And so, in 1929, the Baker Hotel was opened. With 14 floors and 450 rooms, it was the biggest hotel for miles, and it used the mineral water as a draw for all sorts of people. To this day, workers and visitors alike find small things missing from their pockets or bags while touring the grounds, and workers have later found them on the floor in the Baker Suite, the room where the owner lived and died. They also report the smell of cigar smoke in the air, another habit of Mr. Baker further proving his presence. But there are also some less friendly spirits here, notably that of the chopped bellhop who lost his life in a freak elevator accident that saw his top half removed from the bottom half of his body. He's seen floating sans legs and screaming to be made whole again. Workers recommend you stay away, lest you meet the same fate. Known for its programs in engineering, technology, and agriculture, Texas A&M is one of the most highly regarded universities in the state. But the engineering building is home to not only future engineers, but the spirit of a former worker. In 1959, Roy Sims was the foreman for the meat locker in what was 
then the animal industry's building. He was showing his assistant some tips on butchering bacon, and when the assistant stepped out to get them both some coffee, the knife slipped and Sims accidentally sliced his leg, severing his femoral artery in the process. The assistant returned to see Roy bleeding out on the floor and called an ambulance, but it was too late and he passed away. Students and faculty alike report strange happenings in the building to this day. Noises and crashes, cool breezes when all the windows and doors are shut, and even objects moving or being out of place. And many attribute this to the ghost of Roy Sims just trying to get back to work. Number 7. Lake Highlands High School, Dallas Imagine being back in high school, and during a rehearsal for the school play, the lights suddenly go out, and when they come back on, costumes have moved, props have crashed to the floor, and you see a ghostly apparition rise back up to the rafters. This is exactly what some students and faculty have reported at the Dallas High School. Reportedly, the ghost is that of a former student, Elizabeth, who took her own life jumping from the roof of the auditorium. While many attribute the cold spots and strange noises to the wind, there is no denying that there was a student named Elizabeth who attended the school around the same time the urban legend takes place and passed away, though the cause remains unclear. Number 6 on our list, the Ritz Theatre in Corpus Christi. While there are no accounts of specific deaths associated with what was once South Texas's most beautiful theatre, there are certainly enough ghostly happenings to make anyone's skin crawl. Paranormal investigators have reported that while walking through the now crumbling building, you can feel cold spots, hear voices, and see orbs floating through the air, some of which they've actually been able to catch on camera. Perhaps these are spirits who never managed to move on, or maybe they're happy right where they are, enjoying a pleasant night out at the theater in the afterlife. We won't know until somebody asks. Number 5. Jefferson Hotel Jefferson. Originally built in 1851 as a cotton warehouse, the Jefferson Hotel has had haunting stories for decades. To this day, workers who were once skeptical of spirits have been converted to believers after dishes have gone flying, phantom footsteps were heard, and the front switchboard lit up as though the rooms were talking to each other, even when the hotel was closed to guests. Many attribute this to the ghost of Elizabeth, common ghost name I guess, who took her own life in the hotel after her soon-to-be husband sent a note that he would not be coming to the wedding. This has been very verified by newspapers to have happened in the 1870s, and there have been sightings of a woman in white roaming the halls of the hotel ever since. Number 4. Hendley Row, Galveston One of the oldest still operating commercial buildings in the city, Hendley Row has seen many occupants throughout its time. Most notably, it was a watchtower during the American Civil War. Some have reported a soldier on the roof of the building at night watching out for Union Army members. There are also many spirits who appear soaked and wet from the 1900 storm that they and 12,000 others lost their lives in. However, my favorite story from this building is actually more recent. The manager of the market was gifted a photo of Dr. Wilbur, a man who had lived and died in the buildings many, many years before. And they decided to hang it in the market as a historical artifact. When Hurricane Ike hit the city in 2008 and left the building in 10 feet of water, damaging so much of the property, the picture remained unharmed despite falling in the water. During their annual Day of the Dead celebration, the photo is included on the altar, along with many other objects and candles. With a three-person rotation to ensure it's done, the candles are extinguished at night. Yet every year, the candles are mysteriously already burning the next morning. Number 3. Haunted Train Tracks, San Antonio on a dark night in 1936, at the rail crossing on Shane Road, just outside of San Antonio, a tragedy occurred which would rock the state to its core. An after-hours event at the local elementary school had many students staying late that night, and the school bus service was diverted till later in the evening. When it was time to go, students loaded up and headed home. Unfortunately for some, this would be their last ride. The bus had been working better than ever all evening, the bus driver noted, and suddenly it stalled out on the rail tracks. The driver tried and tried to restart the vehicle, but it was no use. Then suddenly, a train appeared. Its lamp must have been out, and it was too late to move the bus, even if it was working. The driver began to carry students off the bus as fast as he could, but then the bus was hit by the train side on, and the driver was thrown from the window. Ten students survived, but many others didn't. After recovering from his injuries and leaving the hospital weeks later, the bus driver got in his car and returned to the rail crossing that night. Haunted by grief, he drove his car onto the tracks, turned it off, and hurled his keys into the night, determined to take his own life. And when he saw the train charging down the tracks, he suddenly felt the car rolling forward, all the way off the tracks and out of harm's way. When he inspected his car, he saw multiple sets of small handprints on the back, perhaps those of the students, not wishing for his life to be lost in the same way theirs had. Number 2. Hotel Galvez, 
Galveston. After the devastating hurricane in 1900 that left many dead and much of the town destroyed, Galveston decided to rebuild. And with that came the Hotel Galvez. Many spirits are said to be lurking the grounds, even to this day, but the most infamous of them all is Audra. In 1952, she was staying in room 501, while her fiancé was out at sea working on a cargo vessel. When news came from the company that their ship had sunk and all hands on board were lost, Audra decided to end her life in the hotel room that night. But a few days later, her betrothed returned to the hotel. Reports had been wrong and he had survived the shipwreck, and elated to see his fiancé, he threw open the doors to room 501 and saw her body. Distraught, he then took his own life, laying next to her on the bed. And finally, we reach your number one most suggested haunted place in Texas, Goatman's Bridge. This bridge in Denton once led to the homestead of a farmer, the Goatman, who was renowned for the quality of his farm's milk, cheeses, and meat. The former owner of the land never saw any such success while he operated the farm, and in a booze-fueled fit of jealousy, he attacked the farmer, put a rope around his neck, and threw him from the side of the bridge. He then returned to the homestead and burned it to the ground, taking the lives of the family and the livestock. When he returned to the bridge to check on his gruesome handiwork, he looked below only to see an empty noose. He then heard three loud metal clangs, like someone was knocking on the bridge. And then suddenly behind him, a large ghostly man with a goat for a head appeared, put a noose around his neck, and threw him over the side of the bridge, taking revenge for himself and his family. Now they say that if you visit the old Alton Bridge at night and knock three times, you too will see the goat man. But be warned, he does not like to be disturbed. Coming in at number 10, we have the Flying Monkeys of Napa Valley. I've always wanted to visit the Napa Valley because wine. I love wine. People across the world have probably heard or even tasted the Californian wine made here, but most of you probably will never have heard of Rebobs, legendary flying monkeys or robots or something in between. They are most frequently sighted around Patrick Road outside of Napa itself. Now, according to local lore, the Rebobs were made by a mad scientist who tried to combine humans with monkeys, although some believe that they're robots created by the government as a distraction from a doomsday bunker they were building nearby. Some say the monkeys hunt teenagers, craving young flesh to satisfy their appetites. All pretty wild theories. Coming into number 9, we have the Witch of the Black Diamond Mines. It is said that the Black Diamond Mines of the Mount Diablo Coalfield is home to the ghost of a girl named Mary. It seems in the 1870s Mary was a nanny, but several of the children that she cared for died of illnesses or completely unknown causes. Mary was then accused of being a witch by the mining community, who hung her with little semblance of a trial. The town did claim that they found evidence of sorcery rituals at her home, but who knows back then? Honestly, they just like burn the witches. Except they hung her. What locals do know is that her spirit still haunts the mine to this day, and it is said to be angry. Mary wants revenge, and I kind of understand. Coming into number eight, we have the smoke of the Claremont. Out in Berkeley, California, there is an old historic hotel called the Claremont. The original hotel was built in the 1800s, but burnt down as a result of a fire. Ten years later, a new Claremont was built and opened. Great, except the smell of smoke has never left. It seems that smoky fragrance says waft through the halls late at night. Oh, and if you travel to the fourth floor, you may or may not meet one of the victims of the fire, a little girl who particularly likes to hang out in room 422. Coming into number seven, we have the San Diego Chalapa. It seems that San Diego may be home to a creature in the ilk of the Chubacabra, Bigfoot, the Sasquatch, or the Abominable Snowman. I really like the word abominable. Abominable. Chalapa is said to be a creature that many say they've heard crying late at night. It's said that the beast stalks San Diego and feeds off the weak, including any children it can sink its teeth into, or homeless people unlucky enough to encounter the menace. Thirty mysterious deaths seem to have been blamed on the creature. Although that being said, in February 2012, San Diego residents breathed a sigh of relief as they thought that the monster had washed up dead on Mission Beach. Have a little look at the pictures and tell me what you think. Honestly, I hope that there aren't any baby chulapas out there around willing to continue mummy or daddy's work because that looks horrible. Abominable. Coming in at number six, we have the Boy of Grouse Lake. I would love to go to Yosemite National Park and do some hiking, but of course the sprawling 3,000 square kilometer park is filled with myths and legends. 
Ever since the mid 1800s, reports of a whaling sound have been noted around Grouse Lake. It seems that in 1857, Yosemite's first park ranger, Galen Clark, heard the cries and went to investigate. It seems that Clark kept hearing the noises and thought that it may well be a dog or an animal, so decided to ask a local First Nations tribe if they had lost a dog or any member of livestock. Legend has it that they responded to tell him that actually it was no dog and under no circumstances should he go near the water. Why? Well, it was haunted by a First Nations boy who had fallen in and drowned. To this day he is said to call out to those who pass by, but if anyone goes into the water to help him or investigate, he will grab their feet and pull them into the lake until they drown, just like he did. Coming into number 5, we have Toys R Us of Sunnyvale. I feel like Toys R Us had bigger issues than a Californian branch store haunting, what with its spate of closures, but nonetheless the Sunnyvale, California location is said to be haunted by a poltergeist. Poltergeist in a kids shop, honestly I can't think of anything worse. Actually, she used to work in a massive toy shop in London as a princess, long story, but sometimes we would do sleepovers for kids overnight and there really is nothing scarier than a toy shop during the darkness because your imagination kind of runs wild with all of the scenarios in which the toys could come to life and like, I don't know, bite your ankles. Oh, either way, scary, right? I think it's scary, but just ask the night staff here at this Toys R Us. Now, legend has it that the poltergeist came about after kids broke into the store and snatched an Ouija board off the shelves, holding an impromptu seance and accidentally unleashing a spirit. Spooky. Coming into number four, we have the albinos of Hicks Road. It seems that Hicks Road in San Jose is a strange place with an even stranger legend attached to it. Locals believe that the road, which runs between Los Gatos and Twin Creeks, is haunted not by ghosts but by so called hostile albinos. Rumours of the clan began circulating in the 1970s and it's said that they are violent to passers by and will stop cars and attack people with improvised weapons. There aren't accounts of them murdering anyone, just generally displaying hostility and creepy behaviour. The legend says that they eat roadkill and they have been spotted dragging away dead deer into the hills. Coming into number 3, we have Haunted Disneyland. Disneyland California opened in 1955 in Anaheim, actually went twice with Landon and Danny 2 and 3 years ago. Here's a picture of us along with Michael McCrudden and Charlotte Dobre of IO, we're having a lovely time, it's a good time, there are balloons. Despite it being the Magic Kingdom, the park is filled with urban legends. The most enduring is that actually Disneyland is haunted by the ghost of none other than Walt Disney himself, who is said to stalk the park at night. He's also said to regularly visit his old apartment above the fire station on Main Street. It is also said that the It's a Small World ride is haunted with the dolls moving and switching places with others. Some say that the haunted house actually is haunted not by one of the ghosts that it looks like are kind of there but by a little boy, apparently his ashes were scattered or something along those lines. Others say that the secret club 33 is the Illuminati headquarters. Honestly Disneyland is so filled with urban legends we've made a whole video about it so you should check that out. Coming into number 2 we have the legend of the black dahlia. The death of Elizabeth Short was no legend, it actually happened. In 1947, the budding 23 year old starlet was found cut in half and severely mutilated. Her killer had drained her blood and scrubbed her body clean and then laid it out meticulously. The case totally stumped the LAPD with the lead investigator Brian Carr saying, I just can't imagine someone doing that to another human being. The murder was front page news for months and Elizabeth's connection with Hollywood made it glamorous in a very macabre way. The killer was never found and her death is one of the oldest cold cases in LA. It was after she died that the rumours and the legends were born. Some say she was a high class escort killed by a lover, some say she was involved with a satanic cult and various news outlets had elaborated opinions on what had happened to her body. I guess we can't really go into it too much but some think that she was covered in cigarette burns and others say they think that she was forced to eat her own feces. Ugh. Somehow she was dubbed the Black Dahlia and books were written about her. A 2006 movie was made about her starring Scarlett Johansson and Mia Kirshner. Finally coming into number one, we have the cursed Hotel Cecil. Some say that all 600 rooms of the Cecil Hotel are cursed. The building has now been rebranded the state on Main to avoid associations with its dubious past. The Black Dahlia herself was said to have drunk at the hotel before she met her grisly demise. There is a whole Wikipedia page about deaths and violence at the 
the Cecil Hotel and on a quick glance I count 16 grisly incidents and those are just the reported ones. Many of the stories involve suicide by jumping from the top of the building, others involve poison. The hotel was also said to be the home of serial killers Richard Ramirez and Jack Unterwedger. The hotel made headlines in 2013 when a Canadian tourist, Elisa Lam, went missing after staying there. A video was posted of her from an elevator security camera by police as this was the last time she was seen alive. Now, the video is actually very scary to watch. She's seen acting exceptionally strangely, very, very, very strangely indeed. She presses a number of the buttons in the elevator and the doors fail to close. She's seen peering out of the elevator and looking really scared. She's then seen trying to hide in the corner. She then exits the elevator and seems to be pleading with someone invisible outside of the door. The footage ends with her walking out of shot and the elevator door opening and closing a number of times. On the 19th of February, her body was found by hotel maintenance workers who had come to investigate issues with the hotel water pressure. Now it seems that she was dead in the water tank and had been dead for weeks. The water tank was used for drinking and bathing water for other hotel guests. So what happened to Alyssa and is the hotel cursed? I'm gonna go with I don't know, sounds like it. While there are many reportedly haunted hotels in Texas, this one seems to top many lists for the most ghostly activity. Most of this seems to stem from the very chilling stories of room 525. In the 1880s, there was a young couple that was having their wedding at the hotel, or at least that was the plan. The groom got cold feet and left the bride at the altar. Now heartbroken, she ran upstairs to their suite, room 525, and took her own life. And it's said she still walks the halls in her long white gown. But that isn't the end of the story. Because in 1991, another bride was spurned at the altar. And after going on a shopping spree with the groom's stolen credit card, she too returned to room 525 and took her own life. Since then, guests have seen her carrying a pistol and walking into the room, all without ever opening the door. So don't stay in room 525 or you may never check out. There's also an eerie painting that's said to be inhabited by the spirit of a young girl, the daughter of a senator, whose expression seems to change on its own. People who view the painting have said that they feel like they were floating off of the ground, though they remained on the floor. They also say that their equilibrium and balance was off for a few hours after looking at her. Number 9, USS Lexington, Corpus Christi. Now before I tell you about this spooky ship, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can catch all of our amazing videos. As a naval vessel that saw actual battle, there have been multiple lives that were lost on board, including that of an engine room operator who still roams the ship at night waiting for the battle to end. The crew of the ship have often reported flickering lights and doors slamming on their own, which given that this is a very well maintained historical site, you'd think that they would have found the cause by now. Maybe it's just the ghosts of sailors lost to time. Coming in at number 8, we have the Marfa Lights in, you guessed it, the town of Marfa. While there is so much beauty in the area and plenty of non-spooky reasons to visit, the main tourist attraction to this quaint little town are floating, sourceless lights that seem to change color and even move in the night sky. Many visitors make the journey at all times of year to see the lights, and there's even a yearly festival made in their honor. Reported since 1883 by people of all ages and professions, no one knows what these floating orbs are. They appear at random, but usually in the same area of the sky, and since there's so much open space and low light pollution, it's perfect for stargazing, or seeing spooky orbs I guess. <laughs> some say that these lights are UFOs, some say spirits, and others think that they're just headlights. All that I know is that if I see a mysterious floating orb, I'm going the other way. Number 7. Woman Hollering Creek, San Antonio Said to be the home of La Llorona, or the Weeping Woman, this creepy creek leaves anyone who visits with a sense of dread. As the story goes, La Llorona was a woman who was distraught that her once doting, affectionate husband left her for another woman. And after confronting him and leaving the confrontation with cuts and bruises, she waded into the water, dressed in her best clothes, and drowned herself in the creek right after doing the same to the rest of her family. Her chilling screams for her children can be heard all the way from the highway. 
giving her and the creek its very apt name. Many people have felt themselves being drawn towards the water by ghostly voices, and some have even been tugged towards the bank of the creek. Perhaps it's La Llorona looking for her next victim. The screams heard and feelings of being pulled into the water have mostly been reported by younger people, making this all the more terrifying given what La Llorona did. Number 6. El Paso High School Now, when you're thinking of haunted places, a school isn't exactly the first place that comes to mind, but this one has quite a story. In 1985, the graduating class received their yearbooks, and when basking in the nostalgia of their group photo, they noticed something odd. A woman who no one could identify was in the picture with them. Now, Obviously, that would be quite concerning. I know I'd be freaked out if there was someone I'd never seen before standing next to me in a picture. The blurry apparition still has not been identified to this day, but some think it's a student who fell from a window years before who never got to graduate. I say give her the diploma. She's already in the yearbook. Sticking in El Paso, in our number 5 spot is the Plaza Theatre Performing Arts Center. As someone who loves the theatre, I try to see as many shows as I can, but I think I'll skip visiting this theatre, no matter how good the production is. Built in 1930 as a movie house, demolished for a parking lot in the late 80s and rebuilt as a live theatre space, this building has seen many, many changes, but some things have stayed constant throughout its history. Many workers of the building have reported seeing a man in one of the box seats, in a tuxedo, smoking a cigarette. One crew member recalls seeing him after turning on the stage lights, sitting alone in the box, as though he'd been there for hours already before the lights came on. And when she saw the smoking man, he turned to her and said, We all have our time to die. And then threw himself headfirst over the balcony, vanishing before he could hit the ground. A former vice president of the theater also recalls seeing a ghostly girl bouncing a ball in the aisles of the theater and always staring. He also noticed that there was a rag doll that seemed to appear and disappear on its own, moving to locations that it couldn't have without someone's help. Even locked doors didn't seem to stop it from appearing in the projection booth. Number 4. Yorktown Memorial Hospital Established in 1951, this abandoned hospital has been named one of the most haunted places in America. And since over 2,000 patients are said to have died within its walls before it shuttered its doors in 1992, I can see why. Reports of apparitions of people in hospital gowns running through the corridors or hiding in rooms are numerous, along with moving wheelchairs, disembodied voices, and footsteps. But there are some who have even more chilling stories. While exploring the halls and rooms that have remained largely untouched since its closure, some ghost hunters have been touched, had their clothes tugged on, or even pushed to the ground while being given a ghostly warning. Some of the spirits are believed to be that of patients who had illegal medical experiments performed on them and lost their lives in the process, making for a very vengeful ghost. Number 3. The Screaming Bridge in Arlington On the night of February 4, 1961, six from the local high school were taking a drive after seeing a movie earlier in the evening. While driving down Bedford Road toward the rail crossing bridge, which had mysteriously been burned down a few years previous, only rebuilt earlier that year, they were startled by another car reversing and honking its horn wildly. This caused the driver to speed up out of fear and, not realizing that the bridge was out, the car careened over the edge and crashed into the other side of the ravine. Unfortunately, three of them lost their lives that night, and their screams of terror can still be heard by anyone traveling the renamed Greenbelt Road. The saddest part of this story is that the car that startled them was being driven by a man who had just barely avoided going over the edge of the broken bridge himself, and he was reversing and honking to warn them of the danger ahead. The entire area, now known as Death Crossing, is now blocked off and no traffic travels through. At number 2 on our list, we have La Carafe in Houston. This historic bar, built originally as a bakery in 1860, has been serving patrons for decades. But many come not only for the drinks, but for a paranormal experience. Bartenders and visitors alike have seen apparitions of a hulking man walking upstairs and hearing his giant footsteps pacing the floor. No one knows who this may be, but some say he died there from some nefarious means. The former manager of the bar can also be seen staring out of the top floor window, looking over his patrons and ensuring they're having a good time. And he seems a bit more friendly. <laughs> However, there are some that report the sounds of a body being dragged across the floor above, but when the sound is followed, nothing's there. Makes you wonder what happened upstairs. And since it's one of the oldest buildings in the city that's been in continuous use, it's become a tourist hotspot and a historical site. Personally, I won't be stopping in for a drink anytime soon, no matter how good the cocktails are. 
And finally, number one, the Alamo. While students are taught to remember the Alamo, they don't really teach about all of the spirits who can never forget. In the infamous battle, thousands of soldiers lost their lives, and many were dumped into mass graves, and others left to rot out in the sun. So it makes sense that you'd have some pissed off ghosts wandering the ground. There have been countless reports of soldier apparitions walking with weapons in hand, taking their usual patrol, and even full platoons screaming and charging into battle. Even in the afterlife, they couldn't get away from war, and so they continue to fight their invisible enemy. There are also accounts of a small blonde haired boy hiding in multiple places where the gift shop now stands, so make sure to pick up your haunted keychains. While the buildings are beautiful to look at and the area is interesting to explore, the history can leave one with a haunting feeling. And with all those spirits around, I'd be careful touring here, especially at night.